Hello, everybody. Welcome back on this Wednesday evening. It's a wonderful night today in Windsor, in St. Con- St. Clair College. I'm your host, Dio Nas, the Holy One. Today, I'm joined by Dan, and we have quite an exciting lineup of game. Today's four matches today, two different titles. We got Valorant and Call of Duty talk us through it. Yeah, an absolutely stacked one and a lot of Akron, as we can kind of see behind us here. Of course, we have Akron for both of the Academy matches here tonight, both for Valorant as well as Call of Duty. And then for Varsity Call of Duty, we also get to see Akron one more time. But then for Valorant, we get to go up against Converse. So action-packed tonight ahead of us here. All Nace Star League matches one way or another, whether it's Varsity Plus or Varsity Premier. The season opener for Academy, but week two for the Varsity teams. Yeah, and the first two games we're going to be having are... Uh, the Academy Valorant and the Academy Modern Warfare 3 games. So we're gonna; those games are going to be at starting around 7 p.m., so mm -hmm. around now. And then th the two varsity titles are going to be a bit later on, both starting at 8.30 p.m. So we'll kind of be having uh, at least two games on basically at all times. And, you know, maybe if something goes to map 3 or a bit deeper, we'll be able to have even three games at once. Absolutely, yeah. We're going to, of course, have that game day style. So we'll make sure we have coverage for everything as well as exclamation mark streams in the Twitch chat. We'll bring up the individual streams for everything. If you do want to also just like kind of fixate in on one stream, you can absolutely do that. And including for Academy as a part of the eSports administration program here at St. Clair, one of the projects that has to be done is actually some of the students have chose to take over Academy COD Broadcasting as their project. So they're going to be taking care of that. They have their own commentary as well, so we make it to listen in and see how they're doing. But um, plenty of action nonetheless around the clock here. And I just want to really, really quickly touch on the results, or not the results, but the current standings suppo supposedly here from what we've seen from Varsity so far when we look into last week. Of course, week two now underway. Both the Valorant, as we see the Call of Duty team and the Call of Duty team did start off with a W. Um, Call of Duty with a quick 3-0. Valorant with a 3-1, or not 3-1, a 2-1. And the one, I believe, if I'm recalling this correctly, was because they bought an outlaw, which is, yeah. well outlawed in the uh, in the Star League rule set. Still too new of a gun to choose. So a little bit of a throw in that regard. I bet you they don't do that one twice. But uh, otherwise, both teams on a hot start. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun today. Obviously, playing as Akron in three titles today, kind of a clash of two schools on the same day. Not something you see too often, but it for sure will be fun. Maybe a little rivalry rivalry can get started, but mm -hmm. we still have a, a couple of minutes before our games. Let's get your predictions on each scoreline today since we have a bit of time. Now, here's the thing. I always think of, when I think of Akron, I think of Rocket League. They're cracked at Rocket League. So I, I kind of wanted to see what happens now when we turn their tables into a little bit of an FPS title. They are a solid school nonetheless. So I do not expect them to go down without a fight. And in fact, with Valorant for our Academy squad anyway, I don't know what it is about them. They always manage to turn these into like 13, uh, 11 types of games, like extremely close. So I'm going to say that... Um, Akron takes the Academy Valorant or takes the Valorant game two to one in a very, very drawn out and like absolute like battle of attrition for Call of Duty. I think we are going to end up taking this one probably a game four. So a three one in this case. Let's keep going down the list. Let's see Akron one more time there for varsity Call of Duty. I mean. Our Call of Duty team is just on another one. I would be a fool to not say 3-0. I'd love to be proven wrong. <laughs> However, it just seems to be the way the uh, tides have been shifting so far. And then Converse versus our varsity team in Valorant. I'm going 3-0 as well. Yeah, two, or 2 0 for Valorant. So I agree with those varsity predictions. Our varsity teams are definitely on another level and really can turn it up a notch. Academy, though, I think I'm going to take our Saints on all the games today. I have a feeling they're going to be able to pull it out. And I think it's going to be a good day for the Saints today in both titles. They're going to be feeling good early and hope they can get off to a very hot start. Yeah, I, it could very well be a thing. But I know from talking to Storm, one of the players on the. Uh, um, the Valorant Academy team, they actually sounded a little bit nervous, to say the least. And it's a little bit interesting because our Academy team for Valorant now is very, very big, to say the least. There's like 
seven or eight, maybe more players or so on that roster. So uh, what kind of Saints team are we going to get is another thing. But I know specifically when I was talking to Storm, he sounded extremely nervous going up against Akron and felt like they were going to have a hard time. But we'll have to see if that does end up being the case and who ends up starting, of course, for the Saints. We'll figure that out momentarily, of course. But um, trying to think of what else. One thing I do want to quickly, um, I'm not trying to ramble on, but one thing I want to bring up real quick is I got to say props to Nace. Whether this was done intentionally or not, we, I absolutely personally just love you guys for it because Academy starts at 7, Varsity always starts at 8.30. It's like Academy gets to open for Varsity and we get like all sorts of matches and all sorts of coverage. So thank you, whether that was intentional or not. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great way to do it. You know, letting the best of the best for last. That's, uh, you hear that? Your main so event, your feature. Yeah, exactly. So it's not talk down on the academy teams, of course, but... Oh, they're but, still great matches. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. But the varsity teams are really on another level. The, the Saints varsity teams, for basically every title, are competing with the best of the best in all of North America. And they're going to look to put on a display today. But we're going to throw it to a very, very quick break break we'll be right back with either valent of call of duty don't go anywhere Welcome back. It was not a long break and we're right about to get back into game. For any, uh, and we're right into game. St. Clair College Academy on the right side, University of Akron on the left. And we are off to the races. If you want to check out each game that's going to be played on stream, they do have their separate link. Exhibition mark streams in the chat, but let's see how this round starts off. It's going to be a couple of kills for University of Akron St. Clair. Able to get a couple of trades back. Nice Last trades coming out. One we won now. Let's see who is able to find the clutch. The care is going to hear that the plants go down. Is he going to go around this corner? Can he get the timing of the fuse? Oh. It's halfway there. He's going to expect oh. the player to be on the spike, but it's a great clutch from Arcus. He's not able to get it though. The defuse does not come through. So St. Clair those. will be able to take the pistol round even with all 10 players dying. And quickly take a look at our starting rosters here for tonight. We do have Storm, Commodus, Lakaru, Dean, Spectre. A couple of those names I actually recognize from the broadcasting side of things. Yeah. Let's go. Then we have Ragi, D10, Atrium, Cursed, and Ar Arcus. Arcus. I was about to say Arceus, but no, that's that's not that's not right now, is it? Arcus. Ar Ar Arcus. We'll, we'll call it that for now. Right. And um, with the Saints being able to take that, of course, right as the spike was detonating. So. Good on the Saints to just get enough time there to stall that one out. Oh, gonna be making them sit pretty here. But bot kind of heavily going into round two here. 
Yeah, they're definitely gonna look to use their economical advantage to take a quick start to this map. They would take the first round. Gonna take full control of mid as well, using their gun advantage, and should look to make some space with that. Obviously, on this map, main, uh, middle only leads towards that B site, so if they want to go into that B site, they'll have to rush through a little hallway. It looks like they're gonna be going for that push. RQ is, is flashed and is gonna be on 9 HP. We'll be able to make it a lot alive, but Lakaro is gonna take him down. That's a great entry pick, and now the Saints should storm into this B site and look to get the spike down. The plant won't be going down, but all three picks come out there. Now in a 5v1 situation, this second round should be going to St. Clair more than certainly. Ethan's gonna find a maybe important pickup there, but Lakaro gets his third kill of the round. St. Clair getting off to a very, very hot start here, and this is gonna be the round that University of Akron have a uh, chance to bounce back in. Absolutely. Fantastic job there from the Saints to make sure that they abused the fact that they had the higher firepower in that one. Solid times as well, not hyper extending in any position, able to get pretty much everybody off the board, only losing the one, so not too bad. Did not take much damage at all. Of course, like saying before, kind of sitting pretty going into this next round. However, Akron is able to buy up at least a little bit. Not necessarily a full buy to say the least, but still enough to do some damage here as we get into round three. Yeah, they're gonna have the Phantoms Vandals. If Saints can take this round, can really start to snowball their way in this game. Let's see. Deaton's gonna find a couple early picks there with the Phantom. Great swing from there. And Saints now are gonna have to back up as Akron are taking up so much space. That was a great start to the round for them. Should be a pretty easy one to win from now. Let's see how the Saints decide to play the 3v5. Looks like they wanna take that space up middle again. Nobody from Akron is really holding that one, so. Should be pretty easy to do for them, but where they go next after that, I have no idea. Yeah, of course, down the two players as of this very second here, the car trying to lead the charge there on that omen, but could very well walk into a troublesome situation if he just keeps on pushing forward. Gonna try and do a little bit of a split here. We'll see if this ends up working. That's so as of right now, they could very well find themselves the opportunity to break on through here. It is just the cipher, which I mean, Cypher's strong at holding down the positions, but if you get flanked, you could still be absolutely out of luck. The Karu right around the corner. They've made the presence known. They are going to be able to get the spike down, but we already see the University of Akron making their rotation in on over. So we should have a relatively fair fight here. Yeah, they get the spike down. Let's see how they decide to play the 3v4. They did find an early entry pick. They're going to go for this breach flash, but is it good timing? Yes, it is. Lakira's going to pick up one. Can they pick up the trade? They're onto the omen. They can. Now in a 4v1, 3v1 situation for the Saints, as Con uh, Condoms was able to find one as well. Let's see how the breach decides to play this one. Finds one on the swing. Only 46 HP. Or Saints need to use their number advantages here. Definitely. Let's see how this swing comes through. Bomb is taking. They really need to take their time here. And Kamados is able to pick up the kill there. A 3 0 start for the Saints as they look to snowball and make this a very, very big lead. While they may have been outnumbered in that case, I mean, they pulled off that post plant very, very nicely and were able to secure that one in fantastic fashion. Going to force Akron to kind of get stuck and probably do a very, very cheap buy to try and get back into this round. Again, 3-0 to start things off here. If, um, if the Saints were nervous going into this one, I cannot, uh, cannot see it right now, to say the least, because they have been rather decisive, to say the least, with these last couple moves. Without a doubt, and let's see how Saints are going to play this attack. They're going to be making their way on to A, but they can definitely take their time here. They don't have to rush anything. They do have the immense weapon advantage. Let's see how they decide to play this one. They love taking control of mid from what it looks like so far, and just sneaking onto that B side has worked so, so well for them. Looks like they might be going for a similar play yet again. Uh, they have all four members up in male cursed. They have to give up that. Oh, it will throw out that flash. Oh, could have found a shot there. Maybe to start off, but Storm's gonna find him instead. And Saints on the 5 4 look to entry the site. Cypher's gonna peek, gonna find one. Can Saints find the trade? Yes, they do. Great shot there. The spike should go down. There it is now. 3 4 for University of Akron. And they don't have really the weaponry to fight this one. But as I say that, they find a pick 3v3 situation. Should be able to get a gun for themselves as well. And they do. But the Cypher ult is massive. Will reveal every single position. Of action players. It's a nice stun there. Spectre is able to find one in the 1v2. Okay. And Dean's gonna find one as well. Now a 2v1 situation for the Saints. They just need to play this one together. Let's see how they decide to do it. The grenade will go out. Can someone peek this corner? He's on the defuse. Doesn't even get half. Oh, oh he should have held that a little bit longer. We'll look for the oh. shots around the corner. And Kamados will find that.
that one, Sinclair taking a 4-0 lead and a great start to this first map. All right, Saints might have had the firepower, but this time that was a little bit more scrappy, a little bit messier, and Akron were able to punish to at least get some credits off the board here for the Saints, but still full buys across the board here for the Saints, nearly full buys this time by here for the University of Akron, and honestly, Lakaru with a fantastic start here to this game, five eliminations and only the two deaths, been able to uh, help with this uh, with its omen. For whatever reason, I don't ever think of omen as necessarily like the leader. The entry. I was gonna say the yeah the entry. I was gonna say a hard breach. That's the wrong game. <laughs> um, but uh, able to make it work out nonetheless, staying alive and finding these trades as we look to maybe have ourselves a little bit of a split push. The spike is down pretty much in the spawn still, so they're not quite 100 percent sure as to what they want to do just quite yet. Yeah, the spike is in spawn. It's an interesting play from the Saints. It opts to go toward that B side every single time, it feels like. But now looking to go onto A, d doing so much work on this A site. And the Saints might look to stay away from him for the rest of the attacking rounds. He's been able to just get a couple picks there every time the Saints decide to make their way over to A. So they're going to rotate all the way back over and try to walk into B as nobody's here from the side of Akron. It's just the Cypher, but he's in a pretty close position. They know he's here now. That's a great camera from him, though. They're, he's able to spot out all two members, and now you see how quickly all of the University of Akron members are moving across. The Saints are going to look to rush into here. So they know the tripwire is there. Look to shoot it out. Yes, they do. Let's see if they can find the entry frags here. The spike will be going down. Commandos, uh, Commandos will be able to find one. The carrier able to find one as well, and Storm's going to find one as well three entry frags for the side of the saints as they're going to get the spike down and now looking very very strong in this 4v2 situation it's going to be very very hard for akron to turn this one around let's see how they decide to play this one Kurt is going to be looking for the peak here can he find anything very very early saints playing this one very very slow and patiently they don't need to rush anything Kurt is going to throw out a smoke there the 1v1 will come through the carry is able to find one more and get out with his life saints in the 4v1 situation are going to spot out curse that's one tag on him a couple more shots and he will be going down let's see he's gonna peek the carry he's gonna find his third of the round omen different right. there and saints getting off to a 5-0 start that is a very very dominant performance from them so far but let's talk about the call of duty maybe in the top right because saints are just kind of running away with that one in the top, bottom left yeah absolutely the saints were able to just punish akron on a uh Bit of a hesitation on the rotation. Meanwhile, of course, like you said, we do have game day kind of kicking up here with Call of Duty on the Academy team. And they're going to be showing up as Bravo for this time by, it looks like, of course, this broadcast being held by our eSports students. So it may look a little bit different, but it's still an awesome opportunity for them. Nonetheless, here, that can be found on Saints Academy CA2 if you want to fixate in on that Academy Call of Duty game. As we do see a nice little shot there from Dean. May have not been the one making the uh, make the peak, but finish the job nonetheless. Great start for them, but Arcus is going to find one back. Saints still having the weapon advantage here because University of Akron just bought full and lost the round. Let's see how they're going to decide to play here. That's a huge flash coming out, but nobody's going to go down. They're able to stay alive for the time being. Shots are coming through. The plan's coming through, but is stopped there. Dean looks for the flank, but Cursed Acres okay. and Norfolk able to find three. And oh. That's a huge three for round for University of Akron and St. Clair. Just get picked apart from every single angle. Okay, they may have had the money flash. Didn't use it, but it does not matter when they have the the sheriff shots like that beautifully done there from the University of Akron that's exactly what they needed to get themselves back into this game financially as well as motivationally finding all those uh, one taps there with the sheriff definitely feels good especially when it's multiple players doing that one so fantastic job there from Marcus as well as the rest of the University of Akron to get themselves back in the game I think this is their first full buy full buy on full buy so Firepower is the same. What do we got for ultimates? A little bit more in the pocket for Akron, but it's pretty well even. It's pretty even, and Saints gonna go for a default yet again. They love this play so much. Then look to rotate over towards that B site. That A site just is not looking too good for them. Every time they go near, there's someone from their team dies. So <laughs> I think they should keep attacking this B site as long as Akron just can't stop them. But they're gonna rotate over, pick up the spike, and it looks like they will be going over towards the A side, as the B side, as there's a pick coming through from Deaton yet again on that A side, on the raise. Just seems to find something every single round. A Saints member goes there, but now Saints looking to overwhelm. The B side spike will be dropped, and let's see how they decide to play this satchel into the site. It's gonna come in, let's see. 
If they can find any opening picks, should be able to pick up the Cypher here. Unlucky timing there, but Storm is able to find a trade as the Solvo is going to come out. He's going to find one. He's going to find the kill there. Storm finding one back though, so a 3v2 now for the side of University of Akron as the spike is all the way on A side and the plant is going down. Saints able to flip the map with that Omen ultimate and now have a good chance in this round in the 3v2. They have to take care of this Omen early, but they won't be able to as the flank comes out here from RQEs and the Cypher cursed is probably just a distraction here, honestly, as the other two members are waking up, waiting to make their mate wait, wait here as the ult's going to come out there. Not going to find too, too much. Time is ticking. Akron have to go kind of quickly. Let's see how the Saints decide to defend this one. They're not able to shoot out the over so now both members exposed. One will go down. It's all up to Storm here on his lonesome, looking for the clutch. Will oh gosh. Yuto still alive. He would find one. They almost lined up for him. Storm finding a fourth there, but the last member should be able to get the defuse as it's ticking. It's very, very close, but I think he will Just get it barely. with one second there. A great try there from Storm, but the University of Akron able to string a few rounds together and looking to come back. Storm basically pulling off a martyrdom perk there that time by getting a couple eliminations from beyond the grave with that ability, but uh, not quite enough was able to, or Akron rather, was able to get that one as we now hop on over quickly to the Call of Duty game. We have Akron in the blue, the Saints Academy are there, Bravo in the in the red, and Siri is just, kind of, or I said Siri, but uh, it's Zero. Very, very, very close. There is a Siri on that uh, Call of Duty team, if I recall correctly, for... Uh, for the Saints, but we do see it seems like the uh, the fragging power here on the side of Akron is just a little bit stronger. They've been able to take the lead so far here in this matchup, and they've been finding these little post, or I want to call it post plants, but once you get that uh, hard point, just these defensive holds have been absolutely fantastic so far there for them. Pieces, however, looking to try and break it. Still 40 seconds on this next hard point, but is going to end up finding one going down. Pieces still finding another one after another. These players are falling. GMG getting himself onto the board as well. Rare is going to find one. Looks for the second one. Beautifully done. She absolutely rocks it and gets right onto the hard point. Great shots there from Rare. Going to get some important time here for the Saints as they need to make their way back into this game. Akron playing so, so well so far, but let's see if the Saints can turn it up and not. Tyrell's going to find one, but will get traded out by GMG as Facknaz finds one as well. As Saints are going to be able to get all of this garbage time. The frags are coming out here from the Saints and they're trying to turn it around now. It's only a 40-point game. Let's see how the spawns are looking for the next hard point. There's going to be a kill going down and it looks like Akron have full control of the next spawns as Tobes finds two huge pickups and that's going to set yeah, the Saints big. back a lot. Rare is going to be able to pick up one, but the spawns are on the side of Akron. Very, very great rotations from them as Saints just can't seem to make their way back onto the hard point. They're just getting shot down from these long angles. They're going down one by one. They're going to be able to find one, find a couple picks, but the spawns are still there for Akron. All these kills matter for nothing unless they move very, very quickly. And you see as they try to enter oh. the hard point, they just all go down. This is going to be probably a 60 second hard point hold coming out from Akron from the look of things right now. I mean, Rare was able to get that one breach, but it does seem like the side of University of Akron for COD have been able to take care of it from there. As we do hop back on over to Valorant, we see Commodus leading the charge here for Saints Academy. Oh. And a big shot there from Dean, jumping right on in, going to take out the fellow the fellow Rays. Takes another one down as well, and the Saints have just been on an absolute tear here on this attack. Only two players left on the side of the University of Akron. Could be in for a world of hurt here. That spike is down. I don't know how you breach this. Yeah, without a doubt, Saints definitely going to be taking this one. And they were able to win the one beforehand as well that we missed. We're able to swing the momentum back in their favors. And now this round is definitely going to put University of Akron in a bit of a financial deficit on. unless they can bring something back here. But Saints with five members able to set up so, so well. Look at this Cypher. They have no idea that he's here. He's going to look for the spray through that one. Won't be able to find it. It looks like the University of Akron yeah. are choosing to save. I think it's the best option they really had. I don't think going into that side would have been a good idea. And the Saints are all going to survive as well. Keep their weapons and another great round for the Saints. Looked like Akron was on a bit of a comeback, but Saints able to stop them in their tracks and take a 7-2 lead in this first half. I mean, at least good on Akron to realize that, yeah, that was probably a little bit of uh, 
a lost round. Let's not just throw our guns away for the upcoming round to say the least here. But still, 7-2. to two. So far, this attack doing wonders here for St. Clair. And the one pattern that I do see from the University of Akron's Valorant squad here is just a little bit of hesitation when it comes to their rotations. There's been a few times, like you had called it out, where um, A would try to rotate over towards, uh, towards B, but they'd kind of stop halfway. Like, they weren't fully committed to the rotation. And it gets them in trouble when the Saints eventually breach on to the one site and it's a five on three that Akron eventually lose but um, we'll have to see what happens in these next coming rounds we do take a look at Call of Duty actually very we close. have a very very close game actually happening over there 210 to 200 if I do recall correctly so if you do want to stay fixated and see how that one is continuing to go that is going to be Saints Academy CA2 if you want to take a look at that one, I'm going to hop on over here as we see Arku's actually just shredding through the Saints. So a fantastic round. Flawless there from Akron. Way to rebound from that one. Beautifully done. Yeah, great round there from Akron. And they're going to be able to pick up that round and maybe can bring this half back to a 5-7 a a round. But as you said, that Call of Duty game was very, very close. Uh, let's see what's going on there now. It's a 20 point lead for the type of Akron Saints. Gonna have to fight for this last harp when they're able to get on. Let's see how long they can hold it for. Tectonics is gonna go down as a couple picks now come out for Akron. Let's see how Rare can do here. Oh. Not able to find any. And it's gonna be all up to GMG who's gonna go down as well. And now the clock is ticking for the side of Akron Saints. You need to play perfectly for the rest of this map to bring this one home. We'll be able to find two there. Okay. Times. And Pisces finds one as well. That should be a bit of more time picked up for the Saints here. But Tobis on the point. Points, Tob's gonna find one. Now this is very, very rough for the side of St. Clair. The game can't end here, so they could just rotate over to the next spawns and try to hold the next hard point, which is exactly what they're gonna <laughs> do. And this is a risky play. They need to hold this hard point for basically the entirety of its duration. And let's see how they decide to play this one. Oh gosh, one bad team fight, and that is gonna be game one going over to Akron with only seven points away. And so far, it's Akron finding the shots over and over again. Pieces and Rare both falling down. Saints trying to run back. They do manage to have control, but for how long? You only have the one player. GMG does end up going down. Factions is going to try to hold from afar. Does manage to take out one and rig it the other. So they are hanging on. Completely oh. neutral here. Fantastic shots coming out here from the Saints. They are going to be able to capitalize. I'm trying to calculate in my head. They would they be can, able they to can, win yeah. if they could hang Perfect. on to this the entire time with maybe two seconds left of yeah. access. So such a close round here. It's oh. all on this defense, but this is a fantastic attack here so far. But if uh, the comeback here now. Rare and GMG. Rare is having a hell of a game right now, and GMG is coming in clutch right when it matters. But it is actually Akron on the point for a split second. Oh, Four kill. points away. The team kill is coming out at a brutal time, and that could be costly. Next hard point. We're going over to the next hard point from the look of things. They won't be able to finish the game on that one. Saints, you rotate over really, really quickly, and they're going to be able to get the good start on it. They have the spawns. They just need to win a couple of crucial gunfights here. Able to stay alive on the point. 237. Oh my Akron's gonna have to make their way onto the site. Faction's gonna be able to find one and will live with his life, which is so, so crucial. Rare's gonna find one as well. Gonna find a Yo! second as GMG finds it with a kill streak. And with five seconds left, that should be more than the game. Akron will not be able to make their way over to the hard point. And St. Clair, St. No way. With the clutch of a lifetime, able to close that one out. And they're gonna be able to take game one in that intense, intense map one. Holy smokes, what a way to finish off game number one. A fantastic showing so far here from both teams. Teams, but especially there for the Saints to be able to keep themselves composed after such a battle. They are able to get that final hard point and just lock it down. Any of those past matches, or the thump past matches, but the past hard points we had saw, um, they're kind of just getting beat out for their first initial takes, and it was just so hard for them to try and take it back afterwards, but they made it count when it mattered. A beautiful double kill from Rare, and GMG, I believe, also got one as well. Just kind of opened the door for the rest of the Saints to find themselves in a fantastic defensive position and clutching that out by four points. Holy smokes. That was, that was one of the craziest endings I've ever seen, but they were able to rotate over early there on that last one, gave up <laughs> what could have been maybe a couple extra seconds on that first one, but enough of that. We can we can talk about that all stream. Let's get back into Valorant. 5-7, University of Akron were able to pick up those last final rounds and bring themselves back into this game, but now we're going to be switching sides to see how Cometus decides to play this one. We'll swing out, able to find one, going to be able to find the second great flick there onto Cursed, and a great start to the round, but he will be going 
going down the carrot though, and the rest of the team able to pinch off of his peaks there and his picks. Okay. And now it's a 4v1 situation all onto Roggle here on the Cypher. Should be able to pick up one, but now the Saints are choosing to push him and will get killed okay. through a smoke there, Spectre. Saints have to be a little bit careful here to no, not throw this one away. They have the spike down and they know exactly where this Cypher is. Let's see how they decide to play. They're going to go for the aggressive play, the swing here. It's going to oh. find one, but Dean getting the trade back. St. Clair playing that one pretty risky, but able to get in the end and take a very important piss around in the second half. I saw them both go around the corner at the same time. I'm like, oh god, everybody clench. This could be a absolute clutch there from Roggle. And to be fair, brought it close, but could not quite get the job done. Saints able to clutch that one um, in the end. But a very aggressive way to handle that, considering the spike was down, like not active on the A site. Optimally, you, you play the, I guess, the less exciting way and just defend the spike. But the trust in their wingman pairings was able to finish the job nonetheless. And at the end of the day, they did secure the W. Maybe cost a little bit in terms of the pistol, but not much of it. No, I don't think so much. I was going to say, that's like next to nothing. So, yeah. oh, or is nothing. But yeah, all good. The care getting a couple picks to start of the round will go down to Arcus, but the Saints having a, little, a good start to the second round is it's going to be 34 HP on this Sova. Dean's going to find the kill with the boom bot there. And now it's a 4v2 for the side of the Saints. Dean's going to find one more. It's going to be all up to the Cypher, who does not have a weapon. Uh, that's going to be too good. They're going to be rushing in with the Spectres. Nice shots there from Storm. There it is. As St. Clair are going to be able to take a 9-5 lead and try to keep the momentum going in the second half. Yeah, absolutely shredded that one. No mistake this time by able to make that defensive um, play stick very decisively. So solid job there once again for the Saints. Going to be sitting in a relatively decent spot. However, they are going to be outgunned, but purely because of the fact they just don't want to buy up when they already have guns. So yep. try to make what they can happen here with the submachine gun and the Bulldogs and just kind of save that money for the next round. Maybe, See what you can do. Maybe take an assault rifle or two off of this Akron squad. Yeah, I mean, in the first half, they were able to win this third round with the gun disadvantage, but they all had Bulldogs. Now they're all with the Spectres, but on the defensive side, they could be pretty, pretty strong here. Just sit around the corners and play the close edges. Could win a couple of gunfight storm. Going to be throwing up some utility towards the middle side of the map, and it's going to lo be looking like a B push from University of Akron. Let's see how the Saints decide to defend this one. Dean here on this raise has been so good in this second half. Can find an opening pick here on the raise. We'll just satchel across. Won't see anyone. We'll get hit by the camera there, so we'll have to take that one out. But so far, so good for the Saints as Push is going to come through here from University of Akron. Rock is going to be able to find one, and that is the ultimate coming up from the Cypher. So, so early in the second half, we'll give away all the location of the Saints, and that is a huge start for University of Akron as they're all going to go on to this B site. All the utility come here onto Spectre. Has to be very, very careful. He will be taking a bit of damage. Dean and Spectre both falling. And this set round looking very, very good for University of Akron. The Saints please come back in here, but they will all be going down. Yep. Flawless round from University of Akron using their gun advantage to their advantage and taking an important round off St. Clair College. Absolutely. Made the firepower difference work in their favor, made the, the right moves, and were able to get onto that B site pretty well uncontested with a perfect flawless round to say the least there. So again, taking a look at some of these players, it looks like Arcus is gonna be leading the charge here for the University of Akron, 14 eliminations to their name as of this moment. Let's see if they can keep on going here, at least taking a look at how the Saints were on the attacking side of things. They looked relatively comfortable, but they do seem to be taking a couple more of these defensive rounds. So this could very well, as this, the rounds keep on ticking, get even closer. I'm expecting like this to end in like a 13-10, 13-11, but we'll have to see as it looks like we're going to be kind of hovering around the middle, just taking our time, no spike in hand. See if we can get a pick. Yeah, I mean, this mid side of the map has been an attack point for both teams, it looks like, on the attack. And Saints definitely were able to find some advantages using that strategy. Now Akron's going to move their way into that B site. And come on, just has to be really, really careful here. We'll be alerted that someone might be behind him. Has a beautiful one-way set up, but he's on his lonesome here as the Saints are going to come over and rotate over 
towards that mid side of the map. University of Akron looking like they want to push out that A side, but Saints have four members kind of stacked towards that B side. So if Akron can make their move quickly, should just have the site completely for free as Saints are doubling down on the B defense. You could see they're all just waiting for something to happen, but as soon as they hear those utility going on to A, they're going to have to all come back. Surely they're getting some call outs now that left. all the enemies are making their way onto the site. The spike should be going down any second, and we're going to see a five V5 retake here coming up for the Saints Spectre. Should be able to stop that plan for a second. Won't be able to do so, but Kamadas is able to find one. Uh, Spectre's gonna find one with that nade. Deaton finds the trade there. 4v3 for the side of the Saints. And now they should use their number advantage. Arcus is gonna be able to find one. Deaton will go down. Arcus finding a second. Didn't get a call out on where he was there. Now a 2v2 situation here for the Saints as the Breach is playing around that wall. This, that's a beautiful smoke there coming out from the Carib. Now the Saints can take a 2v1 early onto that Sova. Would have been huge. Let's see if we get a spike tab. Don't have have too much time to work with here. The Breach is getting ready to throw that nade. They're waiting for that Omen Smoke to fall down, but Saints have to work quickly. Arky is finding his third oh, of no. the round and on this Sova. Just doing so much work. It will find the fourth and single handedly win this round for University of Akron, and it's a big one. Yeah, trade after trade, one for one that entire game up until the very end there. And at the end of the day, Akron just had the post plan and put Saints in an extremely awkward position. So Akron, once again, going to find themselves another round here. And the uh, Kru, very, very close opportunity there when it was the 2v1 charge for that person on the right hand side, but just unfortunately could not find them good on the Akron players to be patient. Trust that your teammate has the follow up and was able to close that one out. Saints now in a little bit of a world of hurt. They're going to be taking themselves yet another pistol low buy or no buy around. They are going to find the one, but immediately trade it out with a double. Yeah, and Storm here will try to do something with that Frenzy. Spectre's gonna find one as well, but it's gonna be all up to his Cypher on his lone. So let's see how he decides to play this. I don't think they have any idea where he actually is. So if he finds some perfect, perfect timing here, could find one. Okay. He will. Will he be able to find a second? I don't believe so. Will be on one HP already. I'm picking up his fourth of this round as University of Akron come one round closer towards the Saints. Now it's gonna be that full buy coming out from both teams, and I believe we're gonna be seeing a timeout in a very, very tense situation here. Saints dropping a couple of rounds, but while that's going on, let's talk about this Call of Duty match. We have our Saints who were able to win a very, very close first map, I believe taking a 2-1 lead in this Search and Destroy game. Yeah, so if we're going to see a Search and Destroy as close as we saw that hard point, then this is going to be an absolute treat to watch as well here. And it seems like, if I were to take a guess, just whoever is on the defending side is probably the one winning this one more often than not. It looks like that to be the case here. So defensively, both of these teams very sound, but somebody is going to have to break this... Uh, break this trend in order to find themselves with the victory. It's going to be our Saints dropping down towards oh, the bottom half. A lot of damage going across here. Oh, GMG wait. hanging on by a thread. Faction is going to be the first to fall to Krill to be able to get that first initial elimination. PC's going down as well. Saints in a rough spot. GMG is going to find the one, but a two-on-two oh, two yeah. now, actually, as Rare is going to get the pickup on the Tobes. Oh. Good angle, GMG finds another one. It's going to be all up to Forbes now to try and stop this bomb from going down. I don't know how you're going to end up doing that rare does have it just looking to place this right towards that b site forbes could get the flag nice. not happening they're on to them and that is going to be akron off the board fantastic job for the saints who get an attacking win gmg and rare able to pull off the 2v4 there great play from the duo there and gonna put the saints down with a 3-1 lead in the search and destroy definitely feeling good about themselves after that one but now we're done with the timeout in the akron again uh college Sinclair College Academy game. And Valorant, let's see how the attack comes through. That's going to be a one for one trade. Storm will get shot from the side. The Kairos they will find that trade as well. Now it's going to be a 3v3 situation. D10 is going to get smoked off. That spike is down. So somebody from University of Akron have to make their way across this one. Let's see how the Kairos decides to play this one. He knows he's in a 1v3 situation. So will decide to give up a bit of space there. That raise is on one hit point. One more bullet <laughs> will take them down. Oh, but Ruggle is going to find a huge pick there. Onto Lucaro, which is gonna give the University of Akron a huge, huge lead as they're gonna 
easily walk into this A site and get the spam down. But I say easily, you could see there's one Saints member there looking to find the 1v2 defenses. Commodus is going to make his way over there as well. Saints could very, very well come back and win this round, but that dart is going to make it so much harder. Spectre now kind of stuck in this corner. We'll have to use his utility to kind of break out of here and will do so. Commodus is able to find one. There we nice. go. The second in this race is on one HP, as I previously mentioned. One bullet will take her down, and surely the Saints know that that's the case. The Cypher ult will come out, and the defuse should come through any second now. They're going to look for the push. They're able to find it. Commodus is going to find that one, and St. Clair going to be taking a 10 a lead very very important round to win there after the timeout all right even though the post plant was secured there for the side of akron saints patiently waiting to go as the duo and immediately found profit that time by immediately winning their trades and just not losing any of them so a fantastic job once again there for the side of St. Clair Academy. And then I do want to give a shout out, of course, because normally we only have ourselves the show for uh, for Saints Nation and anyone else who just happens to be tuning in. But this is just as much of a show for um, by Zips Nation, for Akron today. Of course, we have a bunch of you. I see a couple of you in chat as well. You're absolutely welcome to be tuning in and thank you for tuning in to the matchups here hopefully you're enjoying watching your teams compete here today as we have ourselves two very very close games that call of duty one is probably going down to the wire here in search and destroy and now valorant still only two maps around or excuse me two maps <laughs> two, rounds, two rounds apart two that's the word i'm looking for words are difficult but uh, <laughs> oh i know Don't tell me, boys. I, I start about a thousand times the stream but let's get back into the game 4v4 situation there was an early uh, Ray's old coming out from Univer from St. Clair College, I believe, and we were able to find the one for one there. So now Saints still holding down this defense pretty solidly, but Storm's gonna choose to play this one a bit more aggressively. Uh. Gonna go for the peak there onto Deaton, but didn't have any idea where he was, so Will go down, and I can see University of Akron trying to move quickly, but Spectre's gonna find one. Gonna have to find the second there. Oh, will one. find one, and Will take a lot of damage onto the Sova. So now Saints in a 2v2 situation. I don't think they have any idea The Lakaro is sitting in this corner. They're not gonna change it. There's a one, one oh. HP onto Arcturus here. Kamada should easily spike be able to pick this one up, but the spike plant is beautiful there. He won't actually be planning the one and will maybe be able to get away from Commodus here and make be make his way all the way over to that B side as now there's no line of sight between left. the two. But I think Commodus might have heard him running across the map here. He definitely can. As you can see he's slowly trying to sneak behind but it's a great play from Arcus here making his way all over all the way over to B side. He's gonna get that plant down. Now it's gonna be all on to the cipher here. He knows the plants down and he has to check every single corner. Only one bullet is all, one bullet's all he needs to take down the Sova. Yeah, seriously, Ar Arcus could step on a rock and fall at this point here with how little HP he has, but uh, Commodus does have, of course, this awkward scenario trying to make the way to the spike without dealing with it, or getting the jump, rather, onto the Sova. Can they find them oh, the right Sova's around behind. the corner if they only could see what we see? Oh, oh the flag, though. Bit of a defensive position. Wait for oh. it, and he actually gets the jump on the Marcus. Fantastic clutch to finish that round. Arcus doing God's work for University of Akron. That's at least 20 kills for him in this map. That's 22, I believe. Absolutely Ooh. going off and trying to put the team on his back and able to do so in that round. Let's take a quick look at the Call of Duty game while we can. 3-3. Three, three, three. Three. Akron able to win a few rounds back, and as we expected, a very, very close series coming out here. Rare's going to find the first pick of the round. There are Saints. Going to have to bounce back after losing two in a row. Rare playing so, so well. Trying to get another pick, but Cyril doing so well all, with this SMG underground, just all game, finding pick after pick. Forbes gonna find one as well. Faction is gonna trade that one back. Cyril gonna find one more. It's all up to GMG in the 1v2. You can see Saints just losing those battles up close, trying to play ARs with SMGs. Doesn't work too well in the tight corners. Yeah, it's a little bit rough in those regards, but a decent little position here for GMG. Never mind, gets taken down from behind. So that is going to be University of Akron taking the lead in the Call of Duty game. Now they're trying to do the same here in the Valor 1. Oh, Tied no. up 10-10 and okay, there's nowhere for you to go that time by. Just absolutely on the down there from Atrium. But uh, Karu now trying to make their way over. We do see that absolute beeline towards that B site and everybody's trying to make their way there. Two on the low ground and two probably going to be coming from the high ground. But they take too long to rotate. We'll have to see in just a moment here. Storm and the rest of the gang are here. This is going to be an absolute firefight. Yeah, 
Saints are in a save, so not the highest hopes for them here, as Akron have all their weapons. Yeah. Spectre's gonna be able to find one, but won't be able to find any more after that. 5 HP on this in here. Lakara's gonna, gonna be able to pick up one. Can he pick up the second? Dean will find that. Now a 1v2 situation for Dean. Will be able to pick up a Phantom. Oh, what a flick there onto one. It's gonna be all up to him. In the 1v1, won't be able to take his across his curse does take him down. A great try there from the Saints, almost got the Thrifty. If, if Dean was just looking at that uh, door, would be able to maybe find that kill, but just turned away, hoping the nade would cover his back and does get taken down in the end. There would have been a huge Thrifty round for Saints, but now it's a 10-10 game and this is the most fun part of Valorant down to the clutch. Let's see who's going to be able to take this one. Okay, Akron may have gotten the rounds, but uh, Saints got the clip. That was the most <laughs> ridiculous flick I've seen in a little while. Nicely done there from that Saints player nonetheless. But of course, it got on Akron to tie that one up. 10-10 now, and it does seem like they're on the side of the Call of Duty game. 5-3 now Thanks for the favor of Akron. Search and Destroy mode maybe doing them a little bit better, but again, we knew that match was going to be close as they continue. Oh, the race flies in there. Dean's able to find one. Can they find the trade on to Deaton here? Lakara has to be very, very careful. Deaton gonna find oh. second, gonna find a third up mid, doing so much work on his lonesome as Arki is gonna find Commodus, and it's a complete disaster for the side of the Saints as University of Akron are just gonna get that spike down in the 4v1 situation. You definitely feel like they're gonna be taking this one. They're gonna force Saints as well onto a save round, which is gonna be putting Akron very, very close to taking this map. But this round is still far from over. Let's see if Storm can pull off a miracle. He's gonna look to peak one. Won't find it there, and Akron will be taking an 11-10 lead. And I think Saints are gonna have to be saving this round. They just full bought. I don't think they can afford a full buy. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna oh, maybe they're thinking about it. They're definitely thinking about it. I don't think they have their time out either because they used one this half already. Right. So they don't have too much time to talk about it. But you're going to see Saints looking to half force, have a couple members buy oh, no. some of that heavy, heavy machinery. And it's going to be looking like a force from the Saints. They definitely want to win this one. If they drop this one, that's Here, going to be about wrapping it up. Here's the thing, though. When I was at least, it could have changed since uh, the scoreboard went down, but it looks like three of the Saints forced and two decided to go to Sheriffs. If you're going to make that force, I feel like you kind of have to all in everybody and commit to it. This halfness is just kind of like not trusting your own teammates in terms of the strategic call, which could be troublesome going into the next couple of rounds as we now see Atrium in a decent attacking position as the Saints are all right around the corner from them. And they're gonna drop the ulti and let the rest of them breach through. And there's gonna be the entry. The, oh, that's gonna be a huge okay. coming up from Deaton with that raise ultimate. And now Saints are in the 4v5. Oh my <laughs> goodness, what a flick from Deaton. Will get flashed out, should be taken down by Storm here, but finds his two entries as Storm goes down to Cursed. Now 2v4 for the Saints, 1v4 for the Saints as Spectre goes down and it's gonna be all on. The Cypher here, let's see how he decides Ace. to play this one. Commodus, so many times in these clutch situation, will be able to find the 1v4 here. It's going to be very unlikely, but anything is possible. Time not on their side. Have to make his way oh, on to into the open. We'll get shot through all of the smokes and everyone just spraying oh, yeah. into there. That's going to be the round taken by Akron, and you'd have to think that might be the map as St. Clair College forced that round won't be able to afford anything in this next round. Yeah, I'm really curious to see as to what ends up happening here. Yeah, the two, pe the two people who did not end up buying up last time seem to have something, but now we have like a, a Guardian. I mean, there's still enough money to maybe do something, but yeah, it's now or never, of course, game point here for the University of Akron in this Valorant matchup. But uh, the momentum's definitely on their side as of the last couple of rounds here. Deaton, who was having a relatively quiet round, I feel like, or a quiet game here in game number one, really started to show up in these last couple of rounds here, getting a couple eliminations, maybe even a couple of multi kills for themselves as well. And now, with the rest of Akron all charging towards what looks like the A site, uh, could be a solid firefight here too. Maybe even three Saints are going to spot this out though. So we'll have to see how this one goes down. Yeah, let's see how Storm decides to use Oh, finds one with his utility there. Will use his ultimate as well. Let's see if he's able to find one more with that. It will get shot down, but the retake might look promising for the Saints as Dean's able to find okay. a couple on the raise and this should be a great quick defuse coming up from oh. Saints. Maragi finds a couple, won't find the third. Lucaro's going to take him down. Deaton is going to find someone through the spray of the smoke and half, a, half of the... The uh, bomb was already defused. The is gonna find him through that smoke. Very, very right. close round there. Akron almost able to find some miracle plays from Deaton there, but not able to do it. And now 
a 12-11 game. A couple of Saints will able to be able to retain those Vandals that they just bought, but still not going to be a full buy for the side of the Saints. But Akron were able to go on that little win streak, will be able to still afford the full buys. It's going to be, I think, all up to the first pick of this round and getting that Cypher out, Bolt off very, very early. I think whoever can get that done first will be looking to take this, this round. Yeah, if Saints have been the Cypher ult, they do have the Omen ult as well. If they need to necessarily use it there, no, Kairu thinking about how they could possibly end up using this kind of a now or never situation because if Saints take this one, it is going to be over time. And just HRIP getting splatted by Storm. Gonna slow them down just ever so slightly. And we can see Akron as of right now kind of hovering around that midsection with the exception of the sofa on the right hand side. Really trying to get a gauge going into this next attack here. No charging, no rushing, just trying to find the opening and a very, very uh, stalemate start to this round. Yeah, University of Akron definitely don't want to make a mistake. And they've been pushing this A site a lot more often mm -hmm. than, than the Saints did. Uh, they love this A site. Saints have a couple members on B every single round, but Akron just not going to that one. But as I say that, it looks like they have a couple members maybe rotating over towards that B site. And it looks like they might look to entry this through mid, which Saints have done so many times in the first half. Let's see. How University of Akron can execute this one. Smokes everywhere. The shots will come through. Nothing will die through there. They will shoot out the boom bot. And a couple members going from main. A couple go going from mid. Let's see how Akron decided to pull the trigger here. 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Kind yeah. of have to move a little bit with that spike. The omen will be there. But I think Saints are now more than certain that it's Akron attacking this B site. Everyone's going to rotate over. And it's going to be a fall on fire fight, fire fight. It only oh, 18 seconds left. They have to move quickly. Storm will be here. Able to find one. Will be nice. able to find the second pick there. Huge picks from him. Just pre-firing that corner. Spectre finds one as well. Spike does have to get planted. And will be planted right in front of him. They're able to pick up a third for Storm. It's all onto Arceus. The plant won't have enough time to go down. Saints just have to stay alive. And they will be able to send this one to overtime. As it was a great round from them. Arceus getting a couple picks there at the end but it does not matter Sinclair oh able to bring oh that one God. from the mud as the University of Akron just took a little bit too much time I think on the attack and let all the Sinclair members just spray them down as they walk through that choke absolutely put themselves in a position where they had to focus on beelining it towards the site getting that spike planted and then just kind of dealing with whatever was thrown at them they were not able to get any sort of pick in the slightest really going into that and the firefights just did not go into their favor Saints able to clutch two quick eliminations just to have the numbers advantage near the end there, ending it out in that 2v1. Storm finding, I believe it was two, maybe even three to start off that one. A fantastic round for him right when it matters. So now we have Saints Academy versus Akron. Valorant overtime, here we go. Very, very tight matchup, like we expected, like you expected. It's, it was gonna it's be something about this Academy <laughs> Valorant team, man. Every Always. game has to be an absolute nail biter. Which is nothing for us to complain about. Oh, absolutely. It was so much fun to watch. Let's see how the attack goes from the Saints. They're gonna just full on rush onto this B side with all five members. Let's see how this push begins. Oh. Curse will find Storm. Dean's able to find the trade though, and able to find oh. one through the smoke. Great picks from the Dean there, and they're gonna be getting the spike down 40 seconds. Now if they can all just kind of get out of here and play the clock will be amazing, but Arceus through the smokes, able to find one as Cursed, finds the car as well. A couple of Saints members dropping, still have a lot of utility to work with, but in the 2v3 will be pretty hard. University of Akron, though, have to move quickly as the shots are going to come through there from d Won't be able to find the pick there. The spike is still not getting defused. Dean finding his third of the round, playing so, so well here as the Ray's ultimate goes onto the site. Spectre is able to find the fourth. It's up to d in the 1v2 situation. The flash will come out. He'll dodge that one, but will get taken down by Spectre. And just like that, St. Clair College put themselves on map point for the first time. Okay, the University of Akron just used that building like a cliff and just one by one, the lemmings just went like into the firing range of one saint or another. Just n the communication was just off, it felt like, on that play could not get the retake going that they wanted to. The timing was not there. They did not have each other covered and the Saints absolutely punished them for it. Now in a game point scenario, if they can make this defense happen, which I feel like they're probably pretty comfortable with, but we'll have to see what University of Akron have coming up here for this next attack. If their game relies on it. Let's see, oh my oh. goodness, letting them... <laughs> um, we, uh, we take 
we, we asked for a mulligan on that one. Yeah, I mean, Nerve definitely getting to the players here in this overtime. Let's see how Dean decides to play this one. Such a crucial position for him. He's going to be able to find the top fragger of University of Akron as Command is going to find one. Dean's going to find a second. Melted. As Deaton does find one. 4v2 for the side of the Saints. Dean's going to swing oh. the corner. Storm's going to pick that one up. And Dean's going to find the last one there. St. Clair College bringing it back down 10 12, winning four rounds in a row and picking it up in overtime over University of Akron. Okay, something just happened. Some sort of a switch just got flicked going into that overtime, and the Saints absolutely clutching it up beautifully here as we now are hopping into game number three here of this Call of Duty game. If I'm going based off of what we saw before, I'm guessing this series is 1 1 because Akron was kind of taking that search and destroy by Storm, but now control this time by, it looks like Saints are going to be on the attacking side to start things off here, trying to find which point they want to go through. They got a couple eliminations, three of them off the board right now. Where do they push? They're all kind of far away from each individual site, but a bit of a split here. It's going to be pieces down on the B side. Meanwhile, everybody else is kind of uh, making their way towards A. GMG finding one, Rare is going to find another one as well, and actually this is working out here for the Saints as of right now, they have control of both points, going to at least get the first tick onto A, so that's going to be locked in even oh if they do go down, fix. but it does not matter Factions. if they just keep finding kills like this! Faction's going crazy here, able to find a couple, uh -huh. doesn't find a third, as the A site's completely given up by Akron, but Saints getting a tick here on to be very, very early, a great start for them. Oh, GMG has to be careful here, will be going down there to Necros, he's, he's going to be looking for the second, look how close the Saints are to capping this one, Faction's able to find one back in these close corners, will go down, Rare, going to try and find the clutch here, GMG able to pick up one, as it's just a 1v1 on this side, but Rare choosing to play the safer game, just playing for the life there. Rare's gonna pick up the kill there, and that should be point secured for the side of the Saints. Two ticks now onto A, as they're gonna look to all leave that B side, rotate over to A, and this should be a quite an easy round going over to the Saints as Factions has to find that one. No, Forbes will take him down. Pisces will pick that one up, should get onto the side. Look how close they are to capping this one. GMG is gonna find one. Necro is gonna trade Sheesh. it back, but Saints taking a 2 0 lead in a very, very strong round of control there. I was kind of skeptical about that split push choice that they did end up going to once they had the first initial uh, team fight one, but it kind of came in clutch a little bit right there as the Saints were able to get the one, uh, get the B point and pretty much, or to no, get the A point and then B was basically halfway done before they even started pushing. Before Akron can even get into a position to defend it, it was basically gone and then you lose one or two members and that was just it so fantastic job here from the saints call of duty academy to be able to secure this round like that and one more can put push this towards a 2-1 we'll go back to hard point but akron let's see what they can do on the attacking side yeah, I mean, it looks like B site on this map is a lot harder to take than the A site. So the fact that they were able to take the B site first definitely set them up for success. You could see Saints not really playing too aggressive on the defense here. Factions finding a couple, almost finding a third would have been disgusting. PCs is going to find one, going to okay. find a second. That's a team wipe for the side of the Saints, stopping the very first push of Akron. PCs is somehow going to survive. All of that fire should be going down in a second as see he will. GMG will find the trade onto Forbes there. And you can see Akron not making any real good progress right now. They're able to get a tick onto that A side, but Rare gonna be going down to Tobes there. Forbes gonna find one as well as Factions. Able to find one with this SMG. Looking for the second, won't find it. Siri will find that trade. And it looks like the A side will be going over to the side of Akron, but I think that's more than expected on this map. B side B side. You can see how close it is to the spawn of St. Clair. Just mm -hmm. one or two trades on the attack and you can instantly have the numbers advantage so Akron, uh, Arkon have to be basically perfect to cap this one and Tobes goes down very early yes the trade does come through but GMG finding one more basically shuts down the push of Akron basically immediately but it, they're in the spawn of St. Clair Rare has to be careful here I mm. think this is a great position to hold but you could see Akron playing this one very, very well, well keeping a couple of their members all the way in the spawn of St. Clair it's going to be up to these last two members to maybe find an entry pick as those two move through the spawn but St. Clair are finding the gunfights where they need to and you could see just wasting 
a lot of time now, mm -hmm. Akron. Having to reset every time there's a kill because of how far away their spawn is, Necros is going to find one onto GMG. But from the look of things, St. Clair are looking very good right now. It's like I get what they're trying to do, trying to mess with the spawns a little bit, but it's just not going to end up happening here. Fantastic job from the Saints, immediately shutting down the push as soon as it happens. Akron was trying to mess with the spawns there of Saints, try to win a team fight and then make it so they can't come back. But as of right now, that's not going to be the case. They do manage to get two eliminated right off the bat here and one more off the board. It's going to be up to uh, uh, Necros there, who's on the B site as of right now, going to slowly but surely get this control point on underway, but still lots of time for the Saints to try and catch up, as long as they don't run in 1v1. Faction's got a little bit over eager, is going to get taken down pretty well immediately. GMG, really, really close to Krill at this moment, but not going to get shut down oh, as of yet. Rare oh. does end up going down. So it's going to be oh. basically Krill who that was trying to mess with the spawns, but inside. did not get there. So now oh, the final right. charge onto this site. Can they manage to secure this one? It's being contested as of right now. It's so close. This next Factions. team fight could be huge. Factions does delay this and oh, it is so close. Here. Close, but no, Akron are going to be able to secure this one. Cyril able to find the 1v2 there at the end to clutch it up. Saints were maybe one kill away from holding that one down completely, but just not able to do it. That's a huge round now for side of Akron. If they can hold this defense strong, can definitely bring this one back. It is still match point for the side of St. Clair, and they're going to have to push this attack quickly. I want to see if they maybe go for that split push tactic of attack attacking A and B at the same time, but I don't think Akron will fall for, for that one again. I think they're really going to make sure that they're defending this B site with all they have as A site maybe isn't too hard to take, but it looks like Saints are going to put all four members on that eight star to start away. And you can see Akron are very, very late to react to this as they had to send a couple members to B for because of what happened last round. So Saints will get off to a great start, getting a tick early. Necros will find one onto GMG there. A good start for Akron on the defense here, but the clock is ticking. Cyril is going to be looking for something here. Necros and Tobes, though, he would find a couple, and that's going to be a team wipe for the side of Akron. They're easily going to stop the first push off the Saints here, getting the first five kills of the round. And they're still going all blue in the kill feed. Forbes finding a couple, but Pieces finally able to stop their rampage, their first kill of the round as St. Clair. Look to regroup a little bit. Tobes going to find one through the wall there, but Factions did find Cyril. They need to find that A cap for a bit of more time. Tobes doing God's work in the spot on 83 HP. We'll get a little bit of help from Necros there and they're going to be able to hold this for a few more pushes. Factions now trying to take things into his own hands. Trying to take this position away from the side of Akron. going to find a pick now. Going to move to the back side here. If he can pick up Tobes here would be massive. I don't know if they're going to be able to but the Capture is coming through from the side of the Saints. Factions will be taken down. GMG is going to find a trade onto that. And looks like the A point will be going over to St. Clair as they look to make their way back into this round. GMG going to look for a one on one pick here. Necros will be backing up from there. As you, Let's take a look at the scoreboard. You could see the side of the Saints are all doing pretty well. And it's just Necros who's 23 and 13 just. Dem demolishing them it seems like in this map. Cyril with a great flank onto pieces there. Gonna take them down. Factions though is gonna pick up one but the rest of his team falls and it's gonna have to be a reset here for the Saints as it is GMG in the spawn of Akron but can't go too quickly. Have to wait for a couple teammates to come here maybe. GMG is gonna find that opening pick and could make a lot of space just off that one kill holding the spawn. Tobes though in the same spot, able to do so much work as Cyril's able to pick one m more up as well. Pieces will find Tobes, but their deep plank uh, position flanker of GMG does go down. Tobe, uh, Necros was actually going to go down. I was expecting Tobes to be in that spot again, but that's one pick for the Saints. Rare, if was able to pick up that kill, would have been massive for them, but Tobes will instead find pieces. Forbes is going to find one, and Cyril finds one as well, and with 24 seconds left, this is looking very, very ugly for the side of the Saints. GMG is going to find one, has to stay alive here. It's going to be one final push from the Saints. Has to be perfect Call of Duty from the here. 15 seconds left. Let's see how this, they decide to attack this one. They're going to be going in onto the side. Rare is going to be able to pick up one, but Cyril and in such a great position. Will take on rare. GMG will go down. And yes, Saints are finding their picks. Three seconds left. They get onto the site, but it's going to be all up to a couple members, and they won't be able to find it. 2-2. Two, two. Akon are able to hold on for the defense and send it to a decisive 
fifth round of control. I believe it's going to be Saints on the defense again. So one more final attempt to hold down that B side, B side. But let's look at the KDAs. Necros having an amazing game, 25 and 16, really leading Akron in that round and able to really lead by example. His team playing off him so, so well. Tobes especially as well did a lot of work in that one spot. I'll have nightmares about it today, but was able to find a lot of Saints members from that little high ground. Let's see how the last round is going to kick off. It's going to be Akron on the defense and St. Clair actually on the attack. So works out for Akron a little bit that they're able to uh, kind of luckily get into that defensive position again. I think it's a little bit easier to hold this one than most maps. And it's going to be a full on B push coming out from the Saints. They're going to find a pick early and they have to get into this B side very, very early. I think it's a great play from them. Rare's going to pick up one. Tobes is going to get taken down as well. It's a great start for the Saints as they're going to get that B side control and is going to start taking steel. Throws a flash at the worst possible time. Will be going down. GMG will go down. PCs and is going to be able to trade one back. Will he be able to find the second with the pistol? Yes, he will. But Necros able to find a couple huge picks and it's going to be a 1v1 on the side here. Necros trying to find the kill here with the pistol. Pistol will reload his AR as both members are in the Sire now faction. Gonna look for a shot there with the SMG. Won't be able to find the Necros just sitting here in this one spot. And pieces will be taken down. GMG will be taken down. And that is the push shut down from the side of Akron as St. Clair are looking to get back onto this. Have to definitely regroup and not just stagger one by one. But as I say that, Rare is able to find one. Peace is gonna find one. Rare will get taken down. These deaths are a bit staggered from both sides. So maybe St. Clair can recuperate and regroup here on this B side. It's gonna be another 4v4. But GMG does go down very, very early. The second tick has been taken, I believe, by the Saints, but all four members from... Never mind, that's a couple team kills coming out from the side of Akron. And PC is going to find one. Going to almost find the second. GMG finds a trade as the timer is ticking. That's one more pick from the grenade. GMG is going to pick one up. And that should be the B side going over to the side of the Saints. You could see Akron all rushing over towards that A side. A couple team kills were crucial there for the Saints to take that one. And now it's all on this A side. Definitely the easier one to take. You, they got a tick already. Two ticks away from taking the lead in the series. GMG is going to find one, but Rare will fall down to Forbes. Nobody's on that side. Forbes is going to find another pick, which is huge. GMG is going to be able to trade that one out. And it's just a game of kills at this point. Akron only have 13 lives remaining. As Saints are just out fragging them this round. Tobes going to find one onto factions there. Let's see how Saints decide to respond. Still have a minute 30. Quite a, lot of, uh, uh, quite a large time back, to be honest. Only need 13 more kills to win that one. Rare will be going down there so Saints gonna have to maybe regroup here or look for a pick as Torb and Forbes are able to find one factions picks one up but now we're tied up on kills 12-12 as it's a very very intense last map pieces is gonna pick one up and they just need two more ticks on this A site let's see how they decide to play this one Akron using that uh, high ground so so well. Let's see how this side play around this one. GMG does find one. Rare finds one as well. PCs does get taken down. Rare able to stay alive. Life is so important here. Gonna find the shots there onto Forbes but won't be able to find the kill as the zone is getting captured by the Saints. Are they able to pick up the second tick? Yes they are. And one more tick away from winning this one. Forbes on a great angle here but can't see anybody. Will be able to take down Rare there as Factions goes down. Nine lives to eight. GMG is gonna find one as well. Eight lives to eight. Every kill matters here. Forbes with the pistol. Will be able to pick up pieces. Eight lives to seven. Tobes with a pistol. Able to find one as well. Now it's a game of inches. Faction pick ones up. Seven kills versus six. Every single kill matters. Let's see how both teams decide to play this one. Saints could also just get one more tick. And they win Necros in a great position on the flank. Definitely going to have to clear that one out if you're a Saints player. 30 seconds left. Both teams so, so scared to make the mistake. GMG making one there. Climbing up that ladder. Sierra will find one. Forbes find one onto Faction. No, no response remaining for his side of St. Clair. Have to be perfect. Perfect, now is rare. Find one's onto Necros, rare will be going down though. Six lives to three, as Saints have no more respawns. Oh, and GMG goes down there. That could be the nail in the coffin. They're just not able to pick up that A site, as Syria will pick up factions and pieces will fall. Akron are able to take that one, holding the A site for such a long time, and are gonna take the win on the map. Holy smokes, that basically broke down to a team deathmatch at the very end there for at least that last little bit and then it kind of slowed down Akron eventually. As soon as they got the Saints out of that um, out of that point, they just were able to hang on to it from there and just could not uh, release that death grip basically on that site. So fantastic job there from Akron once again here in this Call of Duty game as we're now I believe at a 2-1 series with Akron in the lead and this game day is 
still just getting started here on the Saints Gaming State channel, of course. If we're going to still see the conclusion of or say the conclusion, we're going to be going to game four, rather, of the Call of Duty game Academy vs. Akron. We have game two coming up here in the Valorant series, which, of course, the Saints are up one as of right now. But also right around the corner, the Varsity side of things will be getting started uh, as uh, we have to play Akron again, but this time it is going to be uh, Varsity Call of Duty. And then Converse is going to be up against our varsity squad in Valorant. So plenty of action to come around. If you want to specifically fix eight on one match in particular, exclamation mark streams, we'll bring up the stream list of all the matches happening as things go on through. And one thing I got to say, though, having all these uh, these four games, the breaks have been much, much shorter <laughs> compared to what we've been used to. It's not taking uh, 30 minutes of the way for a COD lobby or anything like that, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But... Uh, that being said, though, both teams are actually waiting to get uh, into lobby on the academy side of things. Like, Varsity is not up and ready just yet. But before we do throw it to a break, of the games that you've, we've seen so far, like how are you feeling about them? Uh, your predictions, like feeling confident with them so far? Uh, I mean, Akron, look, in Call of Duty, just they're able to be the, a bit more clutch team in these last two maps. Obviously, Saints, very, very close in that first hardpoint map. And they're going to be going back to hardpoint. So mm -hmm. it's going to be an interesting one that I think if Saints can clean up their game just a tiny bit, they can definitely send that one to a decisive map five and on the side of Valorant I think Saints are going to snowball with that first map I think that momentum is something they really really needed and I think they're going to be able to take that one too well absolutely definitely makes sense and as of right now at least with the predictions I've given so far I did say that I thought that Akron was going to win in Valorant yeah but I was kind of a uh... Kind of backwards as of right now. It seems like Call of Duty is uh, bringing the heat so far. But I am hearing right now that Call of Duty is right back into the swing of things here. Starting off on hard points again here for game number four. And so far, Akron picking up where they left off in that last game. Taking the lead nice and quick. Yeah, you could see the Saints kind of falling apart after not really even a choke. Really, it was just a great play from the side of mm -hmm. Akron. But... They are struggling to get themselves back into this one. Down 50-3, to three, maybe a bit of a breakdown on the first point, And they're just not looking like themselves. Getting shot from all places. Speaking of getting shot, Rare is able to find a huge trade there. And Faction's going to find one as well. If PCs can pick up this kill Yikes. here, that's huge. One more player in this site. Can they pick them up? It's all up to GMG in the 1v1 here. As Necros is able to stay alive. Will be going down to Rare. And that just should be some time. Going to St. Clair. But as I say that, Serial will find one. As he's going to be watching this doorway. Going to push oh. it. But the pistol from GMG is so, so good. And the rest of the time is secure for the Saints. They're going to be at 23, 24 points. But let's look how important the next rotations are. As Akron have really good positioning on the map. Hey, of course, Saints might be able to get the scrap time this time by, but it looks like Akron are completely content with that. Saints going to get off the point early to try and get a jump here onto this next hard point, which is going to be actually controlled by factions as of this moment. However, Akron, you can kind of see in the bottom left hand there the map as. Uh, Saints are going to get swarmed oh, in a second, Forbes. and that oh is absolutely goodness. brutal stuff coming up for Forbes, clutching up that gunfight and making it so that Rare is the only one available to try and even stop this, but she's surrounded as well. Staying alive as of this moment has a little bit of backup, and actually is going to be able to get one, and it's going to be GMG getting the second. Could possibly breach in onto this hard point. 30 seconds down on it, so still lots of time available, but so far Akron's got the majority of it, and the Saints are finally going to be able to pick this thing up and get a little bit of time for themselves. Yeah, they're going to get the scrap, scrap time. It's going to be Tobes, though, looking for this contest. Will be able to find it and pick, will pick up the scrap time for themselves. Saints kind of leaving that one really, really early as the lead of Akron uh, is going to complete, com continue to grow. But Saints are looking to rotate over and take the spawns for the next side. It's going to be all on Forbes here. It's going to oh. be able to pick up one. It's going to be able to pick up almost a second. You can see the communication just isn't there from the Saints as they're all turned around as one member almost takes out a couple. But Toes will go down to rare. Necros will pick up rare, finding that trade. Necros finding a second as GMG is going to find a pick. But Saints losing control of the hard point pieces. He's going to look for one. GMG is going to help him out there. There's going to be one. GMG finding the second and it's going to look for the third. 
nice. won't be able to find it. Still so many members of Akron on this side. GMG can only do so much as Saints look to take control of the harp when they do. Necros goes down to GMG and it's just a firing range right now. Such a good angle here. Forbes will pick up one, but they just need to stay alive here and let GMG gun them down as St. Clair are looking to make their way back into this map. Now on a six streak, one kill away from that kill streak could completely turn around this map and GMG is definitely going to look to play a little bit more passive and pick that one up. Let's see if he's able to do so. Will be able to do so. That should be the kill streaks coming out now from GMG. Looking to continue the streak. Now on a seven streak, really trying to bring the Saints back into it, but GMG will go down oh. and the rest of the team will fall. Tobes will get taken down by Rear. Okay. Great challenge there, but it's going to be control of the hard point for Ekron and it's looking rough for the Saints. I mean, these spawns are so quick and it's in a good enough position here for the Saints that even though three of them went down, they're basically pressuring the hard point immediately <laughs> upon respawn. Faction's going to find one, a second while they're taking care of Tobes, and that is going to be pieces finding one more and rare. Everybody's just basically getting on the board here and the Saints get onto this hard point with a lot of valuable time here. Could possibly get themselves pointed towards a positive if they can hang on just a little bit longer here. GMG is going to end up going down here, but pieces there with the refrag, so at least a little bit of training happening. So far, so good here for Saints this time by. 15 seconds left to go onto this point, and it seems like Akron are completely content letting this go right now. Just happy with the fact that they have this lead, and um, just um, and hang on to the point for just a little oh, bit longer as we are about to see the swap happen on over there. As we do see Valorant getting back in underway here for game number two. Yeah, and uh, in the Valorant side of things, St. Clair College getting off to a rough start in game two. University of Akron picking up the pistol round and will be picking up this second round as well as they're able to find the final pick there. Great, great start to the second map for them, but let's look at the side of Call of Duty. It's a very, very close game here in game four. I believe it is match point for Akron, if I'm not mistaken. And they're looking to close this one out, but Factions has something to say about it. So does GMG. They're able to find a couple of picks, and that's three picks coming up from the Saints here. Going to be able to pick up a lot of time on this middle hard point. It doesn't look like anyone from Akron really wants to contest that one. You could see everyone from Akron just rotating over to the next side, and I think that's a little bit of a mistake, giving up so much time here. As Saints mm -hmm. still have these good spawns, just have to be careful a little bit not to trade too early. PC is going to find one. You can see they're spawning right next to the site. Peace is going to have to find another pick here. And if he can find this one on the back of the site, it would be massive for them. It is Forbes inside of here with the SMG. Who will find the trade? Pieces will pick it up. And now the hard point is taking in the side of the Saints. Yes, a couple members fall, but can they trade this back? Necros is hiding in here. Factions will go down. Pieces will find Necros, but pieces will go down as well as Saints are going to come back into the game a little bit, don't have control of this hard point just yet. Yeah, Akron are playing a dangerous game right now with how much they're kind of pumping the brakes on this aggression and letting these like the scrap time go when it's still like in the 30s as saints have been able to bring this within 25 or so points so oh pieces my. find one looking for the other one pistol gets taken down necros gonna get that duel and nice one to finish off rare as well immediately refrag though by gmg but the point is still in control of akron and when do they opt to hop off it? A lot of them seem to have gone. It's only going to be Forbes there on to the point as of this moment. So rather early rotations nearly kind of bit them, but a solid fight for this hard point really uh, put them back in the driver's seat. Yeah, and it's going to be Saints trying to get the good spawns on this next hard point. They're able to find the picks. It's going to be all on Tobes here. If they can take him down, what crucially slow down Akron. Oh, but Tobes is in such a strong position. You're able to pick up one. Will get taken down, and it should be Saints getting control of this hard point for the time being, but you could see Forbes is definitely not as scared to get into the site, and it's going to have control of it. As I say, Saints are picking up a couple of picks. GMG finding a couple. Forbes going to look no to find way. GMG there, but GMG finding a third, and now five kill spree for GMG here. Just putting the team on the back when he needs to. Tobes is going to be able to pick up one. Let's see how he decides to play it. Going to Try and get into the site here. But GMG finding a teammate and an enemy with that kill streak. Cyril's gonna find pieces, but GMG is gonna trade that one out and it should be the scrap time going over here to the Saints. They're gonna be down around 30 points by the end of this, but you can see it. Akron finding a couple huge picks on the rotations there. A Saints gonna look to find the refrags in mid here. GMG doing so much work. Gonna look to find the one with the pistol. Tobes somehow tanking about 100 bullet would have felt like there. Is gonna find that one. It's a 40 point lead for the side of Akron, but St. Clair are able to get off to a good start here in this hard point. Gonna have full control. Does find the opponent there. This Forbes is just gonna maneuver his way around the f on the flank and Jeez. find a couple insane picks, and that is brutal for the side of the Saints as Akron are gonna be stacking these points up.
Yeah, absolutely brutal there for the Saints. They may have gotten into the position necessary to uh, get the hard point off the bat, but then immediately just getting outmaneuvered like that from the University of Akron, showing off some fantastic mobility as well as some fantastic shots. So able to do a lot of damage, get a bunch of points on the board. Granted, the Saints did get it back for a little bit, keeping this within reason, keeping Akron honest, but Akron still in the driver's seat, have the points back in their favor, and are going to be making their way over to that top right corner. We have two players, Necros and Forbes, are already there, but here come the rest of the Saints trying to get onto this point pretty much as soon as it happens. Just send it and see what happens, but of course, Forbes is there, the backbone of the defense, just holding the ground nicely. Krill as well, getting the flanks as well, so nothing the Saints can do to really breach this until they get a hole four. Yeah, it's looking really rough here for the Saints. They're just falling apart as the clock ticks down, rare falls down. They have basically one final push. But if you look in the kill feed, it's all blue. Akron really came to play today, and they are on map point, 15 points away from taking a 3-1 victory over the Saints here. But let's see if the Saints got one more push on them. Forbes now on this five kill streak. GMG was the second kill streak of the game, but just cannot bring this one back maybe they're gonna try Cyril though finding a couple of picks with the SMG and as rare peaks this one will be able to pick up that kill but Tobes finding that oh. double kill and that is going to wrap it up 250 there for Akron they're able to get the map they're able to get the series win it was a very very close series at that but congratulations to them it was a well-fought battle from both teams akron able to come out on top yeah absolutely they just eventually found that stranglehold on that hard point game and really made it count in the search and destroy and control really had the momentum in their favor kind of caught the academy cod squad just uh just unawares a little bit i don't know if it was just a map difference possibly or what but they definitely seem to have found a way to get multiple sight lines onto multiple Saints at the same time, and we're winning those gunfights, and just unfortunately for the Saints, going to end up dropping this time by, but props, to, of course, to the University of Akron playing a fantastic Call of Duty matchup. Without a doubt, and Akron draw first blood in this kind of battle of the... Uh, the schools, and they're going to be taking the first game to start off hot, but let's see if their Valorant team can bring it back. They are up 4-0 on the second map. Uh, they're choosing to go for the Jet as their duelist instead of uh, the Rays uh, the Saints are. That's an interest. No, they're deciding to go for both, I apologize. Both duelists, so definitely feeling themselves a bit after that first game. Going for a bit of an aggressive approach, but hasn't worked out for them just yet as Akron have done so, so well to get a big 4-0 lead for themselves. Dean there. Gonna take the swing, won't find a pick, and they're gonna be forced to back up. A bit of a default here coming out from University of Akron as it looks like they're gonna be making their way over towards that A site and gonna leave that jet all on their lonesome just to maybe make some space, but the push will most certainly be towards that A site. Let's see if the Saints can spot it out early. Did that flash catch anyone? No, it did not. So Saints are not fully aware of this just yet. And you can see they're kind of rotating over to mid, but all five members of University of Akron are going to be on that A side. And that's a huge swing from Rago. They're able to get so much information as the rest of the Saints should be sprinting their way over towards this A side. The push is going to come through. Arcuse is going to find a couple early. Going to find three there. Storm is going to pick up one. Will get taken down. But now it's a 4v1 as Rago finds the second. And now it's a 5-0 lead for the side of University of Akron as they're looking to stomp their way through the second map. They're doing so, so well so far. Saints won't have another timeout to slow Akron down. And it's just looking like a rough start mentally for Simon St. Clair College. Yeah, that's uh, quite the difference compared to what we saw in the other game. Akron just firing up on all cylinders. Sure, they went down in game number one, but they are not going to say die just yet. Of course, this map differential, of course, on the defensive side of things can be a little bit more comforting to majority of teams, but we'll have to see as the Saints are going over towards this B side, it looks like, for the most part. Only the one player on the Saints head towards the A. But it looks like a pretty quick breach here on towards the B site. Open and fire through to smoke. A fantastic grenade, though, from Deaton is just going to snowball this round to complete utter disaster for the Saints. And that's going to be 6-0 now. Akron leading the way. You can see Saints just try to push through that choke and did not work out for them at all. Akron 
doing a very good job here in the first half and definitely feeling a little bit confident as they're going to be picking up that operator. Not something you see too often on the Omen, but they're definitely feeling confident. Saints are forced to save up. They won't be able to afford too much after the last round and this game might be getting away from them. Definitely want them to still stay focused mom uh, mentally, but it's hard to do so when you're kind of getting blown out the water. Let's see if the Saints can maybe bring a little bit of comeback of Thrifty here and maybe turn things around. Uh, definitely got to go through a lot of firepower, though. Like you are saying, that Operator being on the Omen a little bit weird. I mean, we don't have the uh, the usual suspects of uh, the Jet or whatnot on the side of Akron, but we do actually see the Saints charging on through immediately into a trap and just getting absolutely dumpstered. Fantastic job there from Akron to get three nice and quick. Oh. Governor's still for the nice little Sheriff shot, though. Going to take care, take care of Arcus. Maybe oh. get one more. Not quite. roggle has got his number, and that's going to be 7-0. Arc is on this sky on this map, just frying. Uh, if we could take a look at, as soon as someone press tabs, we'll see the scoreboard. But he, in these last, two, in the last three rounds, gotten a couple of triple kills, 12 and two on sky and D10, also turning it up a little bit, 10 and three on that raise. Everyone from Akron really playing their part in this second map, and they're doing a great job of bringing themselves back into this series, taking a 7-0 lead in the second round, Def uh, second map. Definitely not something I think either of us could have expected after such a close first mm. map, but Akira has something to say about that one. He's gonna find that early pick onto the operator, I believe, of Where University of Akron, and now Saints are gonna look to push onto a site, maybe as Deaton is solo on this B side, but St. Clair gonna be able to find some wall bangs here from Dean. The pick will come out from Lucario oh. again, but getting caught by that flash, Dean Arcus will find that pick. The plant should go down, however, for the side of St. Clair College, and this could be the first round that they need. That sky is gonna spot out an enemy here and forced to peek. Deaton will find that pick. 3v3 situation now, it's all Saints are kind of trapped here. Rays is so far away from them. 2v1 as Lakaru is gonna find one more. He's oh gonna no. be able to find a second. Runs out of ammo, but Cursed is able to find one on the backside now. 2v1 situation for the side of Akron, and the defuse will go down. That's a great nade coming out there. And the 1v2 storm goes for the swing, but Deaton is able to pick that one up, and it's gonna give University of Akron an 8-0 lead as they look to continue their dominance in this second game. St. Clair don't have a timeout, so they can't really call it and, you know, take a time to recuperate. They already did that. They just need to work on the fly and definitely get something going as it's not looking pretty for them. They do have a couple of, you would expect for them with the double duelist setup with that raise and jet to really excel on this attacking side, but uh, University of Akron just have their number here and are playing fantastically so far to keep their lead. It's going to be a push up mid, it looks like, from the side of the Saints as Dean is fine, able to find an entry frag again onto that Ray. He's going to find a second pick there as Cursed. is finally able to trade that one back, but he should be going down in just a second here. A storm and command is able to find one and this should finally be around going here to the Saints as they have a 4v1. All right, it took a little bit, but they are able to get themselves back on the board as long as they can take care of Atrium. One possible player left to kind of throw a wrench into things, but with the plant being on the A site and Atrium being miles away at this point here, and try and make a play. A little bit of a flank, but went essentially directly into a tripwire. <laughs> that was unlucky. Holy yeah. smokes. But he's going to take the long way around. Try to juke out the Saints here, but we can see Storm does have his number. The Keiru is right there just in case something happens. Sure enough, drops down. Storm is there, and the Saints are on the board. They're able to bring back around for themselves, and now University of Akron going to have to regroup after that one. Still very, very wealthy considering the fact they've won eight rounds in a row. We'll be able to afford those full buys. You can see the operator no longer getting bought there. Not something they want to play around on the defense here as Hercules and d still leading the way. But Saints, you know, they're able to find kills here and there. They're not looking too bad in the kill department, just not able to string the rounds together. And that's what matters most in Valorant. It's going to be 
Split push coming out from the Saints. Three on B and two on A, but Aichium in the 1v3, able to pick up one early. He's gonna try and back up, and he will do so. Playing his life so perfectly here. Will not find a second, but Deaton is able to help him out, and that's a two, two for one there for the side of the Saints now. Lakeru in a great position, but definitely University of Akron know that he's here, as was called out by his team. And it's going to be a rotation over from the side of the Saints. They're going to definitely look to get their way onto this B site, completely giving up on the A site. And as the plant yeah. might be going down for free, but it's going to be all on the car here to find a couple picks. He will find one onto the raise there. I think he knows this guy might be pushing him. Oh, maybe not too sure, but he will be able to make it out of his life. That's a great little pickup for them there. 3v3 situation plant will be going down 40 seconds to go. Let's see how they decide to play this one. See everybody rotating over for the side of Akron Saints. Just kind of sitting still and chilling out. But they have to move quickly if they are. The Akron, Lakaro's gonna be able to find one cursed, will find the trade, and St. Clair Saints just able to pick up that second round uh, of the half for them. Very, very important, just finding all the shots last second, and maybe if they can win these next two rounds and stri string back a comeback, could make this one uh, very, very winnable. Obviously, off to an 8-0 start, not a match that you expect to win as a viewer, as a player, but if they're able to stay in there lo locked in mentally, they could pull off an incredible comeback. Let's see how Akron decide to play this one, because if they drop this one, they, their economy won't be the best either. They won't afford a full buy for the last round of the half. It's going to be a split push again for the Saints, kind of what worked for them last round. Going to see if it works for them again, as Akron's going to respect them a little bit more now, sending two members early to defend this push. A lot of utility going out early, but no picks picked up for either side, as Akron kind of heavily shifted over towards that B site, but have are going to rotate back towards A site. St. Clair, though, getting read like a book. You can see they're going to make their way all the way over to A site, as Akron just have to sit still, and this round will look so, so good for them. Saints actually going to opt to go up mid here with three members. If they can find an entry pick here with one of their duelists, could definitely be the start of a great comeback. Let's see how they decide to play this one. There's a breach and a raise crossfire here. D10 is going to be able to pick up one. Going to be able to pick up the second. Spectre will find a pick on to Curse there, but a great life there from D10. Getting two in the car is going to get picked up by Atrium here. Kind of falling apart for the Saints here as they're put in a 2v4 situation and exactly they are mid, they are able to get off that Cypher ultimate, but the bad news is going to come is that they are getting pushed. The Raze is able to find her trade there and it's all up to Commodus here in the 1v3. Completely capable of the comeback, but going to be very hard to pull off. Yeah, this one's going to be a little bit weird to at least. Sure, you have the spike in hand, so you do have a little bit of tempo in your favor, but you're not going to have a one-on-two in your favor. Good shutdown here for the University of Akron to take care of a ninth round in their favor. And, of course, thank you for the over holding down the fort there. Of course, with the chaos of game day, there's tons of observers, of course, happening here at St. Clair College and lots of streams to make sure that everybody can watch the match they want. And sometimes PCs like to mess around with us a little bit, so thank you for holding down the fort where we got that fixed up. But with that being said, of course, that is going to be varsity coming up very, very shortly for both Call of Duty as well as Valorant as our Call of Duty team is going up against Akron as well. But our Valorant squad is going up against Converse University. Those matches will be, of course, starting very, very shortly. Exclamation mark streams if you want the stream links to those. Otherwise, if you want to catch a little bit of everything, be sure to stick with us here on the Saints Gaming CA channel. And it's going to be University of Akron getting off to a great start in this 12th round. It's going to be the last round of the half and finding a few picks early. Saints just trying to make their way up mid not able to find anything for themselves. And in a 3v5 scenario, this round is looking very, very dire. As University of Akron moving a lot of members over to mid as well. Cursed, gonna look for the blind here. The swing will come through. Deaton is gonna throw out that satchel and is gonna swing, gonna, is gonna find one pick, gonna find a second as RQ finds two there. Deaton picks up the carry to close out the round and close out the half in a very dominant fashion. University of Akron able to take the first half 10-2. 
Okay, so there is just so many people on the side of the University of Akron that are stepping up huge this game here. Of course, Deaton and Arcus is going to be leading the charge there with 18 eliminations and six deaths and 14 and six. So two extremely standout players so far here in this matchup. University of Akron doing a fantastic job. Bringing all the Saints relatively even across the board, but just have not been able to find as many trades in these um, or in their offensive half. We'll have to see if they're maybe a little bit just that much more comfortable in the defensive half. They're going to have to be if they want any chance of taking game number two and calling this a 2-0. But right now, all the momentum, everything just seems in the favor of Akron as they dive on in to this next round. Yeah, they're going to be rushing this A side in D10. We'll find Again. that entry frag. Going to be able to get away with his life as well, throwing that nade up there. We'll find so much value out of himself and will still have his life as it's going to be the plan go down 40 seconds now for the side of St. Clair to come back. Dean's going to look for a shot there, won't be able to find it as there's a one for one trade onto Arkies. Great pick from Commodus, has got a lot more trades but Cursed able to find a couple. Now it's a 3v1 for the side of the Saints, uh, for the side of University of Akron, sorry. As Cursed find this third kill of the round, another pistol round falling to University of Akron. You could really see this one slipping away from the Saints. Absolutely. Just unfortunately, the confidence doesn't seem to be right there for our Academy uh, Valorant squad as just these duels, every time it seems like they're... Uh, oh, no. He took oh, you, you hate this kid. But uh, every time you peek around the corner, it seems like uh, you've been popped before you even have your cursor past the wall. So it's a rough spot here so far for St. Clair. They're definitely going to have to pull off a miracle run say the least, to go into this one. They did a solid job in overtime during oh. game one, and Dean finding the Sheriff shot just like that could be the beginning of something. Let's see if the Saints could hang on and maybe turn this into a snowball event. d with the Judge able to bring down Storm to 20 HP, yeah, but hurt. not gonna take him out just yet still. That raise gets up close with that Judge. Will be danger levels for the side of the Saints, but they do get an opening frag. Still mm. gonna be a bit under weaponized here. Won't have as much money to work with, but they are able to take the man advantage. Spectre are gonna throw up that flash, won't find anything. Storm has to be very, very careful, will be going down early. Now the push will be coming through, and RQ is able to find a couple, able to find a third, but deep finding a collab there onto two. Oh my gosh. Still, nonetheless, a 2v1 for the side of Akron as kind of low HP bar on that raise. This is very, very do doable for Commodus if he can pick up a weapon here, and he will do so. It's going to be only a Marshall. It's not going to be a Bulldog or a Phantom, unfortunately, but still very, very doable. D10 is one shot away from going down. They have no idea where Commodus is, but they're holding someone very, very close. He lets off a shot, kind of, to let his friends be know, but D10 has the judge, and you definitely oh, know no. as soon as Commodus goes around this corner, <laughs> yeah. he will be taken out. 12-2 lead for University of Akron. They put themselves on match point and in the prime position to take this one away from the Saints. I mean, I don't care how good you are. If you have a Marshall versus a Judge in a close quarter scenario like that, you are probably toast as that is going to be round number 12 now for University of Akron. Game points on the line here to tie this series up one to one. And don't know if it's just the map difference or what, but this University of Akron squad looks completely different compared to what we saw during game number one. A lot of that, I know we've kind of touched on it before, D10, it took way or way less time for him to come online. It took a long time in game number one to really like start making his presence known, but now he's just leading the charge, absolutely destroying everybody and giving the Saints a hard time. As we see D10 once again, making that judge work for him. Oh one more, goodness. nearly finds a second, oh, but even no. though he doesn't, the rest of his team is there to clean up. And it was Akron kind of on a bit of a save, but just finding those Five sheriff points. shots, nice. Spectre picks up one, still not over here for the Saints, but you could definitely see this one just falling right in front of them. Let's see if the Saints can bring this one back. They do take out the Sage with the Judge, so they don't have to worry about those close corners too much. Great flash there from the sky. There's going to be the Gecko utility used, but Atrium and Rogler are going to find the last two members of it. the Saints. And a very, very, very dominant map too from University of Akron. And they're going to be able to tie this one up at 1-1 as St. Clair looks to bounce back in map three. All right, yeah, like you were saying, night and day difference here. University of Akron firing on all cylinders. Once again, as we see on the scoreboard there, that is going to be D10 and Arcus just leading the charge. 21-7, 21-9, respectively. 
and the closest saint there is going to be Lakaru with 11 and 14. So just could not really get anything started at all here on that map and just a rather tough one to watch for the Saints fans. I know the um, the Zips fans in chat are definitely going to be happy about that one. I know I'm personally happy to see this one go into game three, but this is going to be interesting depending on how this uh, this last map goes. I know they did send us the maps a little bit. I'll quickly cheat and take a look here in a second to see where we're going, but what would you expect after what we saw in game two? Because it seems like close quarters just wasn't it. Yeah, and you know, you say close quarters isn't it. I think we might see something like a breeze along a sightlined map. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think Saints definitely would prefer something with a little bit more of mid control, uh, longer sightlines in mid control. In the first map, they were able to use that mid to attack that B site so, so well. I think on breeze, you know, you can pick either A or B site from mid. The mid is just so open. I think it would be a great pickup for them. And I think definitely they have to retalk something after a bit of a, a bit of a rough game, too. Absolutely. I was going to say it's uh, they're going to Sunset, but that's actually the Varsity maps I'm looking at. So I actually don't know exactly where we're going for game number three, but we are right around the corner for having three games going at the same time. Of course, we're going to see the conclusion. Game number three of the University of Akron versus our Saints Academy team in Valorant. We're also going to see the University of Akron versus the Saints Varsity team, but this time in Call of Duty. And then our next Valorant matchup is going to be Converse University versus um, our varsity team as well. And it sounds like we do have the game, or one of the games rather, coming up in just a moment's time. So again, just it's just lining up perfectly where match after match, no breaks, which honestly, thank goodness, because there's, so there's been so many times where we've seen with Call of Duty specifically where... Uh, we're just kind of waiting around for 30 minutes for the game to stop bugging out. But the beauty of game day is there is action somewhere at pretty much all times as we now have our varsity lineup up against Converse University. is sent to start things off with a rather traditional team composition compared to what we see from Academy. But I, I guess at the same time, Academy we haven't seen on Ascent yet. So fair enough. I mean, I've seen our Saints of Varsity team pull out four duelists before, so I won't put anything past that. Fair but enough, yeah. This time, they're going to choose to go for a little bit more of a standard comp, definitely respecting <laughs> Converse, and definitely mm. understanding that they are not a team to be taken lightly, but our Saints definitely are not worried, that's for sure. They are one of the top teams in Collegiate, Valorant, all around North America, and the best in Canada, so they are definitely going to look to start off strong, but I don't know. Their pistol rounds are always a little bit shaky. They seem to that is true. struggle yeah. on those pistol rounds. If they can get off to a hot start here, it would be a great start for them. Absolutely. And this Converse squad is... Uh, if it's the same one that we used to see go up against the Academy squad, that used to be a back-and-forth battle for Academy. But we'll have to see what happens when it goes up against Varsity. I feel like I've recognized Agrol and Nemesis. I don't know Ooh. if I just like the names or if I recognize the players or what. But with the Saints starting on the defensive side of things, some decent damage being done to the St. Clair Omen. And as the rest of Converse dives on towards this uh, site, the Saints are going to have to collapse and they're looking like two ways onto site. Yeah, it's going to be only two attacking ways from the Saints here. Kaiju's going to look for the shots there. Won't be able to find the two players down in hell. Let's see how Saints decide to play this one. Flash from KO is going to be coming out. They're going to be the peaks. Kaiju going to go peak wide. Eggroll is going to pick up the first one. And Nemesis is going to pick up the second. That's like three trades back, though, from the side of the Saints. 2v2 situation now. One player in hell. One person on side. Instinct around this corner is going to find third with that shark dart. Looking for the fourth. One more bullet will do it. But he'll get taken down by Blitz. And that's going to be the first round going over to Converse University. A great attack onto that A side and able to swiftly just steal one away from the side of the Saints. I look away for one second and it's gone. Holy smokes, Converse just hanging on by a thread and managing to pull that one off on that post plant. Solid job there. Blitz going to be finding themselves two eliminations and that one. It's a good start for Instinct as well there for the side of the Saints, but not enough to get this around and no major forces from, from either side. Just going to be SMGs on the side of Converse and then just going to stick with the pistols here for the Saints. Maybe see if they can squeak an elimination or two with the sheriffs. Yeah, gonna look for something with shock through their instinct. We'll be able to get out a couple picks there coming out from Giza on the sheriff. Now it's a very well winnable round for the side of the Saints. A couple classics though won't be the strongest weapons here. Instinct playing very, very close with that sheriff. If someone peeks him, could be a kill. But all three members. 
from Converse University are on the site. Let's see how Saints decide to play the retake here without really the weapons to do too much damage, but enough damage. And Nemesis goes for a dangerous swing there, goes for a couple dangerous swings, will be taking a couple of shots. Saints have to move a little bit quickly here as time is not on their side. The push will come through there from Smiley, but Eggroll in a great position, will be able to pick up one. Nemesis finds one as well, straight out by Kai Youssef, walking straight into one. Eggroll gonna pick that one up as well. And now in a 1v2 situation, Caillou just backing up with the Sheriff. I don't think you really want to be saving this one. Has to go kind of quickly, waiting for the peak from Eggro. Nice. Will be able to pick that one up, but the spike is down. No Will pick way. up those last final kills. Die to the spike as well. Don't want to be holding on to that Sheriff. But the second round will go over to Converse as well, as they're able to get off to a pretty hot start here. I mean, that's just the worst case, right? You got this, the Sheriff, you don't want to try and dive in onto a point that you know has SMGs. You're not going to win that fight nine times out of ten oh, unless forcing. you're absolutely right on point. But like you said, forcing immediately here for round number three. You can see the uh, their credit line here on the right-hand side of that scoreboard 40. that they have next to nothing with the exception of Instinct, but I think he's just rebuying here. But yeah, same thing like you're saying for Converse. Very little in the pockets. Lots on the line here on this round. Could very well swing the tempo for the next upcoming two, three rounds, depending on how decisively this goes for either side. Without a doubt. And, you know, everyone died from the side of Converse last round. That's why they don't really have any money for anything. The risky play here is to go for that force, and that's exactly what they're going to do. I like it. I think it's, it's a great play, especially after you get off to a go good start. But... There's a team that can bring this back. It's definitely the Saints. Kai, you're going to see a couple members here. That's a great uh, smoke there. Almost got caught doing so, but won't. And it's going to be a slow A push from the side of Converse. They're not making their way onto site just yet, as they might look to rotate this one over towards that middle part of the map and maybe go over to that B side. But that Killjoy utility is set up in mid there. Great, great setup there from them. It's going to be a mid push coming up from Converse. Let's see who's going to be able to find those picks up in mid. Giza's going to be able to pick up the spike. Uh, and he's going to get taken down by Nemesis. Great shot by Nemesis there. It's going to be a one for one early as Converse is going to look to wait to make their way into site B. Egro going to find one shot there, but we'll be able to stay alive. TP out on the Omen. Great TP from Smiley now. has no idea where this Omen is. We'll look for the peak, but 20 seconds left. Converse need to make their mind up. It looks like they're going B and they're going to have to go very, very quickly. But now Saints could maybe find a crossfire. If Kai can peek out at the right time, we'll be able to find one. That's a great kill from Mixian as the spike kill carrier is killed. Caillou will find one as well. And this should be a certain round for the Saints as Instinct and Caillou just pick apart Converse from all sides and are able to take that crucial third round. Gosh, if anywhere that you don't want to be within the last 30 seconds is stuck kind of in the middle between both points as uh, Converse University was, that was a rough position to try and have to fight your way out of. Make sure you had the firepower, but the Saints, as we saw on that B site, two-pronged attack, regardless of which way you peek, you're going to get blasted by somebody, even in a group scenario like that. So Saints absolutely punishing the positioning error from Converse and able to get themselves onto the board here and with a round that was so heavily invested in that very well could turn the tides here and get the saints the lead if they can hang on of course definitely not a surefire thing but uh some of these sheriff shots just need to be absolutely cracked without a doubt it's going to be very hard for the side of converse you could see how passive they are playing there's they can't really push anything St. clear mm -hmm. we're we'll happily accept this trade they'll play very passively of their own but as i say that giza He's gonna go for the swing mid. Does he have any idea that Nemesis is here with the Sheriff Alarm bot will get taken out. Giza now knows that one has to be here. Caillou will pick up the kill. That's a great little grenade there from Giza. Forces the peak, and that's gonna be a couple early picks. For us at the Saints, it's gonna be Converse trying to make their way onto B, but considering how much they're underutilized and underweaponized here, I don't think there's any chance they can break through the Saints defense. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm happy to see that there's no ego checks or ego peaks with the Saints, even though they know they may have the weapon advantage. They're using their utility, they're taking their time, Every, everybody's just following suit as they would normally in an even round without being overconfident. Instinct here has a decent angle on one of the members. Giza is going to be stuck there for just a moment's time, but is going to get the jump onto a couple of these members. Seth's going to find the elimination there onto Blitz, which just leaves it down to two. Caillou's going to secure that one. Agro's going to get the... Oh, never mind, he did not quite get the plant, so that is going to be a flawless, but to be expected when the pistol round... Um, puts you in that bad position. 
Yeah, now seeing clear college varsity able to tie it up 2-2. In the bottom left corner, okay, though, go. oh my goodness, University of Akron playing St. Clair College Academy are going to be able to win that pistol round. And we saw what happened last time University of Akron won the pistol round. They went on an 8 0 spree. So let's see if our Saints can kind of refocus there and bring it back. I'd also like to say that this is St. Clair, of course. So we are going to 100% lose the pistol round and we're going to make the epic comeback. This is just what yeah, we do, apparently. Very possible. <laughs> As we now, of course, back to the varsity side of things, we have ourselves what looks like a beeline towards that B site but kind of choked up oh my in the goodness. hallways. A little flank there from Kai. He was getting a trade out one for one. But now, with all of Converse kind of stuck in the corridor, how do the Saints handle this? This is huge. The Sova ult oh. forcing them either to exit or go move forward, and neither option is good. Now it's a 4v1 or 3v1 for the side of the Saints. I apologize. It's just a KO here. Blitz is going to try and do something, but with so little HP, he will be getting tagged up. One wall bang bullet could even take him down. You can see they're playing super passively here, knowing they don't have to push, and it should be the final kill. Instinct's going to be looking to... Sova dart him here. Gonna, his location is going to be exposed again. The spike is down, so they are just watching Damn this it. one. I mean, he has to peek here, but we'll look for it. We'll be taken down as soon as one part. Oh, there's a flash. They're not even going to try and look away from the flash, and okay. they're both going to go down. Blitz, great play there. Let's see if Inkstein can catch him in mid here. We'll be looking for it, and oh. we'll be able to find it. Almost a big throw there from the side of the Saints. Neither players decided to look away from the flash, and then just the peek and the shots were great from Blitz, but Inkstein able to find the clutch there with his eighth kill of the game, putting the St. Clair Saints in the lead 3-2. Okay, I'm not going to lie, I kind of wrote that round off after the instinct uh, Hunter's Fury basically wiped the entire team before the fight could even actually happen. But they made it, uh, or Blitz made everybody uh, stay honest, to say the least. They're bringing it down to a one-on-one -on -one at the end. Granted, Instinct able to clean things up nicely, 8-2 to start things off alongside Kai, a fantastic start in their own rights. But definitely could have been a little bit cleaner. But dub is a dub as we have the blades coming out. And that's gonna oh be Kai. You fight one, fight oh two, fight three. Can he get some more? Almost finding it, chasing them down. And it is going to be <laughs> just an immediate shredding of this Converse Houston Mercy squad. Caillou with the 4K. Great kills there from Kai. You can see Nemesis also whipped out his knives there for some reason in the 1v5 and just oh, no. tried to find the clutch. But Caillou takes him down with the judge after finding the first two knives. And that's a very great round from them. Eco frags or not, great shots from Caillou. Able to pick up four. And now this can be a big round for both sides. You can see the operator bought by Caillou, who has been so, so deadly with it on the jet. is definitely going to be looking for an early swing here. And I think if Converse really decide to push this one, it would be their worst idea. They're all going to look to go mid as Caillou is going to make a bit of room there. Nemesis walking pretty far up mid and trying to get some space for them. But Converse playing a default here. Kiza has to find a pick here. Oh. Caillou will actually find it with their operator. Great pick up there. No way anyone decides to pick this one again. Caillou looking there with the operator as Giza is going to be able to find one. Gets traded out, but it's still good for the Saints. Spike is still down all the way, and Spawn Crass will pick that one up, and he'll probably make his way all the way over to A, or at least attempt to. Yeah, this is going to definitely be a tough time, especially now that Instinct takes care of one more off the board. Long range shot there onto Nemesis, taken down. So now the two members of Converse, last one's there. Seth is going to be the first line of defense, assuming they breach on through here. And immediately going to find one, finds the second one. Smiley there for the backup as well. That's everybody going to find themselves on the board. Team Ace as the Saints find their fifth win in this one. A little bit of a rough start, but have been just absolutely nonstop ever since. And it's just constantly giving Converse a, uh, a run for the money here. So it's just not found too many eliminations and could not find a round yet. Yeah, they're just struggling after those first few, but speaking of bringing it back, St. Clair College Academy finding a couple picks to maybe pick this round back and make it a 2-2 game. It's going to be three picks from there now, and now they have a 3v2 situation. We'll be looking to get to that plan down. The Brimstone Holds will be coming out to stop that one. And it looks like Saints are going to rotate all the way out and make their way over to B, but in the 3v2, we saw them lose the pistol round. We saw them probably bring back the third round there and now they're looking to win this one tp coming out from the viper here still a lot of time for the saints to work with well let's see how they decide to play against this viper the shot will come out there from the brim and he's gonna find the third there st Clair college academy able to pick up their third kill of the round but as i'm saying that <laughs> detective carter found a couple seth 
picks that one up as well. St. Clair looks like they're running away with this one. Just took a couple of rounds to pick it up, but it was pistol rounds. It is a little bit expected at this point. And both, bo actually both of our Valorant games are now Saints lost a pistol round. It's, I think it's a curse. Is it a curse or a blessing if Maybe we get the blessing. W in if the we end? Win, it's I a have blessing. no idea, but you can start to see that our Saints are starting to feel themselves a little bit. Now, granted, I know an Odin can, does have some shenanigans on this map that it can actually pull yeah. off through, I think, the defense on the B side. Yeah. But even then, still, I don't think too often Leah be used. But we're going to see the Odin coming out. And we know, especially Smiley, has a lot of fun with those Odins. Especially when everybody just lines up for him, but, which those small quarters can definitely do. But... Instead of the B side, they are looking to maybe take this push towards the A side. There are two Saints, three Saints actually, there to try to defend this, assuming they do move forward. They are being very, very cautious, very hesitant. Yeah, Caillou's going to look for the Gigas flank. Nemesis <laughs> is going to take him down. He, I don't think he got the flash he wanted there and just didn't get anything there. Now St. Clair on the back for a little bit, 4v5. Operator on the KO here. Giza's gonna pick up one. Smiley's gonna miss that shot, but Giza's gonna pick up a second there. Smiley gonna find a third. Oh. Seth picks up a fourth, and it's all on to Eggroll here on the Omen. As soon as he goes around this corner, will be taken out. Finds another pick onto Instinct there. Let's see if Smiley can Good find move. the shot. Just pick up the pistol, jump, take him out oh. the short. Great shot there, 13 <laughs> HP. Don't worry about it. Great shot there all around from the whole team as Saints are able to take that one somehow too. I think Smiley's flash there, he was pinging at the end, might have hit the lamp pole and that's why Caillou, <laughs> Caillou just kind of jumped in front of the whole team and couldn't kill anybody. But his team got his back, St. Clair up 7-2, just keeping the snowball rolling, rolling and looking really good in the first map. I was going to say, it's unlike Caillou, I mean, I know the man is absolutely legendary at finding headshots and whatnot, but it's unlike him to kind of dive into everybody like yeah. that. But that would make sense if the flash happened to have dinked off the, light, the lamp pole. Uh, you hate to see oh, it. What but shot. what thing we do like to see, though, is Caillou back on this operator, immediately taking care of Nemesis, t deleted off the board. And he's going to look for the How about another? Just like that. Blitz off the board, just like that as well. The rest of Converse is looking to go towards that B site, but there is not much left in the tank to try and breach this one. Yeah, Caillou is putting on the clinic. The Killjoy ultimate's going to be used here from the side of Converse. That's a very, very Optimistic. interesting <laughs> strategy. I don't think this round is the round to do it, especially down two members, but you got to do something desperate as Giza's going to find one on the entry as it's going to be the rest of the team flooding through. Detective Car is going to pick up one. Instinct's going to trade that one out, and it's all onto Eggroll, who's going to TP all the way to a side. But in the 1v4 situation, you have to ask yourself, is maybe this just kind of a waste of an ultimate. Can he pull off the 1v4 more than certainly? Yes, but on 45 HP, Smiley's going to peek around this corner. Will be going down. Great shot there from Eggroll to maybe start of a great, great clutch. Let's see if he can pick up the other two members here. Instinct will have the Operator in here. We'll have to be oh. careful as, uh, sorry, Caillou with the Operator will choose to pick up a Vandal. Jump in there, pick up his third of the round. St. Clair, eight rounds in a row now. Just absolutely snowballing their lead and really putting the nail in the coffin of Converse. Yeah, an absolutely solid attempt, I'll still say there, from Converse. I'm very, very surprised that after going down two players as they did, they would still invest so many ultimates onto a uh, round. But they're confident they nearly pulled it off there with the Omen going over to the A site. But still, you have to really, really find your shots and just find the, the positioning, I guess, to make it happen. As we now have, of course, the Academy side of things still going down on the Saints Academy CA channel as well. And it looks like the Saints have kind of gotten the ball rolling a little bit here, battling out and on bind this time. So something that sure has its fair share of close quarters, but a little bit more longer sight lines as well for some of our players that may be a little bit more AR favored, but Relatively quiet round to really start this one off with 45 seconds left to go. We'll probably see something explosive as we actually see Caillou whipping out the knives and finding a quick double on the varsity side as well. 
Yeah, I mean, both teams losing the pistol rounds and then just snowballing at least four rounds together. It's going to be a great... Let's look at the Academy game. You know, that one's a bit closer, and the Saints are in map three, so they're going to be able to find an opening pick here on the attack. Let's see what Atrium can do on the defense. We'll be able to pick up a kick, pick on the Viper. Living on five HP will get healed up as well, so not the best entry there for the side of the Saints, but they still have full control of the side, and Spike will be go down. It's looking like it's a save round from University of Akron as well, so Saints definitely looking to pick this one up, the kills are coming out from University of Akron. It's a 2v3 now for the side of the Saints. Storm has to go huge here. Is able to find one. Will pop that fade around the corner. The sky has to be careful. The dog will come out. The shots will be taken there. They'll no be way. missed as the Storm finds oh. it. Now in the 1v1 will be taken down as the thrifty round, I believe, from Akron comes out in the most clutch time. Let's see. Is it a thrifty? It is a thrifty. That's a brutal hit to St. Clair, both momentum-wise and money-wise. But let's look at the top right corner really quickly. 2v1 one situation now. 13 seconds left. Eggroll has to get the spike down. 10 seconds left. Is he playing for KDA or what? Has to go quickly here. Smiley sitting on that site, not letting him do anything. He knows that Inkstinks around this corner, oh. but Inkstinks will pick him up, giving Saints the ninth round of the half and their ninth round in a row. Damn, unfortunate there for Academy, but solid job there for Varsity, putting Converse in a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of scenario. Left or straight, which, or excuse me, right or straight, which one do you want to peek? And assuming that the other person will uh, pop out and get the refrag. So an incredible round here for Caillou and Instinct and even Giza. Just fantastic KDAs across the board here. Wow, Caillou 20 and 4. 20 and four <laughs> the absolute cracked standout this time by just putting on a clinic, as you had said earlier. We saw even finding some efficiency with those knives, just making it look flashy, making it look good, as the next round is underway oh, here. Hunter's so Fury damage. doing some damage, but not getting oh. the job done until Caillou finds the headshot. Great little pick there from Caillou. So the entry for Converse is taken down, and that's a rough start if you're a fan of Converse. Saints now taking full control of the map. It is the last round of the half. Both teams have bought up a little bit, but Converse just looks like they have no idea what to do here. Saints just finding the shots at the right time. Giza won't be able to find any shots there. Caillou missing rarely there, but is able to still get his one. Does get traded out. Instinct on the flank here as Detective Car is here as well. Seth does get taken down by the Sobo, but Detective Car is going to peek this corner. It won't be good news for Carter. He will be able to find one. We'll be able to find the second. Great news for Carter, actually. Now it's a 3v1 for the side of the Saints. Giza has to find a pick or two here. We'll be able to find one. Finds oh! a second. Great spray down. Does he decide to pop the Killjoy Ultimate here? Or pros don't fake. There goes half of the spike. The swing will come through here. Does still have the Killjoy Ultimate, but wow. will find the shot there onto Detective Carter. Giza finding the clutch in the 1v3 situation and will give Saints a 10 to lead through the first half. No 9-3 curse this time as we hop on over towards the Academy side of things where we do see, I believe the Storm once again trying to do the 1v2, could not quite get it done this time by in a very, very intense game three scenario. Of course, with it being game day in Call of Duty, Varsity is also going to be starting very, very shortly as well. Once again, to everybody in the, or everybody viewing, exclamation mark streams in our Twitch chat. If you type that in, it will bring up the link list for all of the matches happening if you do want to specifically watch one match. Of course, we're going to be doing our best here to dabble and catch the best bits of everything happening across the campus here for uh, St. Clair Saints Esports. But uh, if you want something in particular, exclamation mark streams will get you there. Yeah, it will. COD game, as you said, coming up soon, hopefully having a bit of technical difficulties just getting into the lobby but oh God. that is esports <laughs> Caillou looking to find the first pick there won't be able to find it Giza will actually pick up Eggro on A and it's looking like flashbacks from the first half when Converse just easily took A site mm -hmm. St. Clair able to replicate it beautifully here the spike does go down 40 seconds for Converse to make their move and they have to move, make their move quickly as Saints are simply just sitting back and waiting for the defenders to come Smiley gonna throw out that flash to buy just a few more precious seconds and when every second counts it's going to be important here. Giza holding down the crossfire. Smiley throws out that flash. Nemesis finds a pickup, finds oh. a second onto Sep there, living on 4 HP. Giza's going to find one. Giza have to find a second with the turret, wow. but Blitz does pick up Smiley on the flank there. Converse, you know, the only rounds they're winning seems like are the pistol and the follow-up ones, but if that's the only rounds the Saints lose, I don't think they'll be too upset at themselves. 
10-3 game as Converse looked to make the comeback. I mean, props to Converse, though. The Saints were in a very, very decent, like, relatively strong post-plant position there. And a lot had to go wrong for the Saints to give that up as easily as they did. And Converse just found the opportunity to make something out of it, getting themselves back on the board here on the pistol round. Yes, of course, we can meme on it a little bit. It's, it's Saints on a pistol round. Of course, it's going to go that way. But... Um, at the end of the day, Converse just absolutely clutched up that round and capitalized on the mistakes that the Saints ended up making. And now it's all going to be sheriffs and a marshal here for the Saints to try and, uh, I guess, stop the bleeding. And Saints are definitely more than capable of pulling off the thrifty. If anyone's going to do it, it's going to be them. Let's see how they decide to play this one. Will start it off pretty slow here. Caillou, though, making so much space up mid here. And it's going to be practically in their spawn if he just decides to go their instinct. Let's see if he can find any entry picks. Oh, I thought he found the shot there onto Nemesis, but a great shot from Nemesis there. Picking up the first blood there. That is an uh, important pick for the side of Converse. Instinct's been so playing so well on this map so far. Caillou's going to push through with that Marshall alongside Giza with the Sheriff. They're going to look into the spawn. Can they find one? Yes, they do. There's Caillou picking up one, finding the body shot onto the second. Nemesis is, though, going to pick up Smiley Detective Carter, picking up Giza. And this round's looking very rough now. Four side of the Saints. Krast is going to pick up one as well. Now it's all onto Caillou in the 1v4. A couple members are below on the HP bars, but this one's going to be very, very hard. Let's see if Caillou has a bit more magic in him. Might be able to find one around the corner here as they're both inside of that smoke. Let's see how aggressive Kyo decides to play this one. Sees the turret. Will just jump down there and get taken down by Krast. Commerce University replicating the same thing that happened in the first half of this game. Able to string the first two rounds together. But now the Saints are going to be able to pick up their weapons and they will happily buy up the Vandals. It looks like Converse. We'll have a lot of money for next round, but let's see what they decide to do this round. They're going to choose to go with those cheaper weapons. Still very capable of picking up this rounds, but we saw how strong Saints are when they get these weapons. The ones that can just one-tap you to the head with the Vandals, with the Operators, with the, with the Phantoms. Very, very dangerous things. Two people going to move up into the smoke. A very aggressive play here. Coming out from Converse University, St. Clair can't find any shots through there. Seth walking up mid here has to be careful as two members from Converse are right around the corner. Let's see how Seth decides to play this one. I don't think he wants to make his way up this hallway because he could get swung by either, but he will choose to do so. Does he have any idea? Egg rolls in his corner. Yes, he does. Picks up one. Second sh swing comes through. He's not able to find the trade onto Seth here. Seth finds a second. Wow. Able to find a third. Look at those crispy flicks. And that is going to secure the A side, four side of the Saints. Spike should be going down as this round should be locked up. Yeah, the door now wide open here for the Saints to make their move towards that A site. Finding one more. They don't mind the one for one in this situation. They'll still find the W in the end. Detective Carter, the last one alive. Going to get peaked here by Instinct and taken down. Now, a quick update, though, for everyone who's wondering where the Call of Duty stream is for, uh, for Varsity. I personally made an error and accidentally uh, logged the Call of Duty PC onto Saints Gaming CA2. So it was trying to stream on top of the Valorant game. So a little bit of a, a whiff on my part there. My apologies for that one. But we are going to be going live with Call of Duty. It is in game two right now currently. It is going to be up in like two minutes time on twitch.tv slash Saints Gaming CA3. Again, quick link for that exclamation mark streams in the chat. My apologies for the inconvenience, but we'll be very back up there in just a moment's time. Things happen, it's not the end of the world. We'll see the game up soon. End of the world though, Caillou going down first. Not a sign that Saints want to see Smiley though, able to trade back Nemesis instantly. It's gonna be Saints on this B uh, side very, very quickly. They didn't have any idea the Blitz is back here. They do, they're able to take him down, but so much damage done to Giza. Still a 3v2 for the Saints. All you need is one HP and a couple of both. Oh. Egg roll gonna take half his HP and Giza on the flank, able to find one. Smiley picking up egg roll and that is gonna put the St. Clair Saints on map point against Converse here. One more round, it's Converse won't even be able to afford the full buys and St. Clair just haven't lost a single round where they've had the upgraded weapons. As soon as they can buy the Vandals or Phantoms, they have been lights out and they're gonna look to continue 
their dominance with a B push here. But it looks like Converse is setting up with four members and we could see an absolute bloodbath on this B site. Yeah, it has to be now or never here. Otherwise, Converse is going to be dropping out of game one here extremely early. 13-4 would be absolutely devastating to the morale as we do see Caillou diving on through immediately just Again. judged down, just taken out immediately. So now Nemesis has the blades available to possibly maybe shut down that corridor if the shots are right. But after Caillou and falls initially, they are going to hesitate and actually make their way on over towards that A site. It's going to be Detective Carter who's the only one I think in position yeah. to actually make some sort of defensive act. Is at least going to be the first line of defense rather on this A site to make this call out. But right now the Saints nice and quiet, haven't exposed themselves at all, but here come the rest of the squad. And the plan's going to go down. Detective Carter only has a share of cans to do too much on defense. There will be going down. Seth, though, kind of over overstaying his welcome. Could have maybe got out there, looked for the spray through the smoke. Does get taken down by egg roll. But Blitz is going to find instinct as well. Now it's a 2v4 for the side of the Saints. Couldn't be a very hard one to win, but nothing is impossible. Giza going to have to find this one here. Won't be able to find it. It's going to be Smiley picking up one, but will get taken down. And that's going to be the round going with Converse. You know, you might be a little bit too late for a comeback, but they'll definitely be taking this round to maybe bring some momentum into the second map. Absolutely, but it's the quest not over till it's over, but the way this game has been going, I would definitely be there to agree with you. And prediction-wise, was would fall along the same lines as well as, of course, when we were talking about it in the pre-show. Both of us are, I think, in, like, same belief that this should, in theory, be a Sinclair 2-0. Yeah. But... Anything could happen, and I of course. Would, like I always say on the broadcast, I would love to be wrong because it means it turns into a fantastic show. So I'm absolutely okay with that. Let's see what you can do, Converse, here with your backs up against the wall. You've got a little bit of firepower. What can you do with it? Let's see what they decide to do. Saints are going to have free a site, completely free. Just Nobody charge, train on. Yeah, I think Converse... Ooh, they do pick up a kill on Gizo in mid, however, but Converse, I think they realize that their best way of stopping Saints if they, is if they just 5-man and 5v5 fight. If Saints go to the other side, 5v5 retake and maybe find a pick here and there. Seems to be working out for them. Worked out for them last round. Let's see how it works for them this round. They able to find the opening pick. The plant does go down. Caillou's going to pick up Nemesis. It's a huge pickup from him, and if Caillou can find another pick here oh. onto Carter there, is able to find it. Will have his knives as well. Choose to pop them. Mixed going to find a couple, and it's going to be all up to Crass, who will be going down 13-5, map one, St. Clair College, Varsity, gonna take it over Converse University. All right, Converse didn't say die, but unfortunately they will fall in game number one after Saints just had quite the quite the area in the early to mid game where they just snowballed it absolutely out of control and was able to just get such a lead that it was just impossible to come back from. But of course, the matches are now underway. Of course, Academy Valorant is also going on, but we do now have, here we are, um, St. Clair versus Akron in Varsity Premier for the Star League. So here in Search and Destroy, two to one to start things off. Not 100%, of course, who's in the lead as of right now. We'll get the report on that in just a moment's time. Again, apologies for the tech issues earlier, but we do see and Slay is going to be the first to fall after Thieves does manage to take them down. And actually, no, actually, MZ and Boyo is right there as well, taking notes. Now Priestley finds the one. It's going to be all up to the two members here of Akron to try and find themselves onto this point. A good little angle, but it's going to be a one-for-one, one, which then just leaves it all up to Thieves to go up against Brandon and KB. I cannot see this going very well for him. KB almost had a sight on him. Nope, doesn't matter. It's going to run right into one of the Saints. And St. Clair going to turn this into a 3-1. St. Clair looking very, very good. They're better in their uh, respawn game modes is what I noticed from our varsity side. On those respawn game modes, they absolutely slaughter everyone. But Search and Destroy is that one game mode for our Saints, our varsity Saints, where it's a little bit close, maybe too often of the time. But let's get back into Valorant. Enough with my blabbering. It's going to be an entry coming in from the side of Ar Arkin, and they're going to be able to get the spike down in the 4v3 situation. I believe they were able, uh, St. Clair took the first half 7 5, but then University of Arkin were able to win that pistol round again, and now it looks like they're trying to snowball their lead. Let's see if that Sky Dog can find anything. No, the Brim. 
smoke is going to be so, so That's deadly so here. Annoying. All three members have to somehow walk Send through it. here. The raise, Satchel will oh. be there. RK is able to find one, and he's doing so much work on this guy. D10 going to push through with that raise, Judge. And it's going to be University of Akron taking their third round in a row. Going to be able to, to take that 8-7 lead as they're looking to snowball on this attack. Yeah, you can kind of see some of the Saints and Patience really coming to bite them there. Cause yes, dealing with those smokes over and over and over again have to be so dang annoying to try and deal with. But just as much as I love seeing the Rays just go full send, sometimes that ain't the answer. And that is going to be Akron going up 8-7 to seven here in this one Game 3 scenario. So this is going to be an intense one to watch as things go on through. Yeah. Financially, it looks like our academy team is definitely hurting a little bit. Some of them are yep. buying up, but others... We have this half-sees buys. I don't know what you want to call this. I just call this miscommunication yeah. whenever I see it, because if you're going to save, everybody save. This uh, three people with the sheriffs and two people with a vandal is going to cause a problem and mess with the economy for more rounds to come. So we now see it looks like Hackrid were able to finish off that last um, search and destroy route. I have to, normally I'm completely content with saying the school name and then the, the game, but considering akron has been basically Every everywhere <laughs> on the stream here today, I kind of have to be a little bit more uh, precise about things as we now see a push here towards the east side. Oh no, they're kind of in the middle as yeah. this round's just getting underway. Yeah, they have the weapon advantage. Akron, so Akron, so they're not gonna uh, be t uh, rushing anything. They can take their time. They can take their good duels. Don't want to take any risks and maybe risk getting thrifty, especially in a spot like this. Would definitely swing the momentum back in the side of the Saints. But it's gonna be a full-on B push here. Let's see how our two Saints can fend them off. They only have shares, but they have a good amount of util with the Viper and the raise. Deaton's gonna find one, but Dean finding a couple is gonna go down. That's a great start, though, for the Saints' defense. 3v3 situation. Yes, they don't have the weapons. They do pick up a Vandal here, though. Look, Haru is gonna have to go absolutely massive on this. Brim, and it's gonna be Spectre is also able to pick up a Vandal of his own. Storm on the flanks, able to pick up one with the Sheriff there. This is a great turnaround for inside the Saints. If they can pick up the Sky here in the middle box, the Fade, Util gonna do so much here. And they're gonna be able to pick it up. They know exactly where their last member is in the 3v1 situation. 50 seconds left, and is wow. gonna be able to pick that one up. It is a thrifty-ish for the side of St. Clair Cause. They had a couple of members buy up those Vandals, but in this particular scenario, it pays off really well for them as they're able to bring themselves back into that game. Okay, so strategic philosophy, my mind is boggled, but in terms of execution, the Academy squad has proven to me once again why I'm behind the commentator's <laughs> desk and on the production side of things instead of a player. Shutting my mouth and proving me wrong, being able to get themselves that round there. As we do take a look at the okay. Varsity Valorant side of things, it looks like Saints are actually up against the wall here at the start of this round. Steph was able to get a gun picked up for himself after they did end up losing that pistol round. So a little bit rough for wear there. He's gonna end up falling, it looks like. But now back to the search and destroy. Here's Saints on the attacking side, kind of hovering towards that B side of the map here. But there are two members ready. Thieves is right there from the side of Akron and MZ as well is going to get taken down. KB securing that one for the time being. Thieves is a little bit busy though, just kind of bouncing back and forth. Has a rough idea of where they are. Flanks on oh it. He's going to dive in and is going what? to actually just get a double melee kill onto the Saints. You never see that kind of play. May get the clip, but it looks like the Saints have the positioning as Brandon is going to go towards that site, get this thing planted immediately. It's going to be all up to, to She Loves to get this one done. But we have the crossfire in tow. This is going to be extremely tough. You're going to have to either find a cracked flick of some sort, which with a controller is extremely difficult to do. Let's see what they can end up pulling off there. Hiding behind the car. Oh, nice you shot. look for one, here comes another. There's just a rock and a hard place. Which do you choose? 20 seconds left. She was Aiden just struggling to make any movements here. Yeah, so it's going to pick them up, and that's going to put Saints in a 5 2 lead. They're going to be on map point. And, you know, I don't know who won map one. I have no idea. But I'm just going to take a quick assumption that Saints took it as they're like the best respawn team in all of collegiate Call of Duty by far, I would say. So I'm assuming they're on a. Uh, 
second their second map point here. Gonna look to take this one and take a lead over Akron here. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, as soon as we get the confirmation, we'll definitely let y'all know there. But as we do see Search and Destroy, Saints on game point once again. One more time, here on the defending side of things, they can shut this down. They should, in theory, be sitting pretty here in this series to continue the flawless oh, season so far. Voyo is going to find the first initial one onto Enslea. Enslea not being afraid to dive in and get the scouting information, but does oftentimes lose the life for it. Makes things a little bit difficult for the Saints to try and fight back from, but when KB and the rest of the Saints can find some return frags, it definitely makes things worth it. She loves does end up going down three on three with about a minute left to go. KB able to find a pick there, and Priestley picking up that SMG, the rival nine, usually not something he picks up too often. Everyone usually rocks the MCW for the side of the Saints, but KB is looking to push and does not know there's a player right next to him. Is able to stay alive for one second. Can he win this 1v1? Oh my oh. goodness, Thieves is able to get it. That would have been an insane outplay from KB, but Priest is going to look to find that trade immediately. Can he find it in this corner? He's going to find that 1v1 now. It's a 2v1 situation for his side of the Saints. The bomb is down and 20 seconds is left. It's going to be up to Bio to pick this one up and plant it, but he's not looking, even looking for the bomb. He's just looking for the kills. Saints just have to stay alive and play their surroundings well. The bomb will be picked up now by Bio. He will have to plant this one onto the B side, I believe, but no won't chance. be able to get anywhere. As St. Clair, Saints are able to take that one 6-2 and are going to be taking map 2 over Akron University. I mean, they're running around so much, but the Saints somehow still always manage to find a way to have a crossfire from two separate locations to make it impossible for the player on the side of Akron to make the hero play. As we take a look at Varsity's side of things, a little bit of a back and forth it looks like. Going into the favor of the Saints as of right now. Three on four for them for the time being. And then just taking it slow for just the time being. That spike is down, however. Looking to try and tie up this series. Post plants in position. And it looks like Confer's looking to try and take the heaven route, with the exception of that one player who just got moved. Kayo was able to find Nemesis there with a great shot, and they know exactly where the last two members from Converse are. They are playing a little bit slow. They don't have to rush anywhere. The spike is down. And you know, Converse able to win the pistol round. Not looking too good here in this one. They're gonna look to save maybe their weapons here. I don't think that's the worst call, but Caillou does not want that to happen. Oh. Detective Carter will pick him up though, and the rest of the Saints are gonna back out. So a couple weapons saved for Converse. But I'm getting some flashbacks from the previous map here, Dan. <laughs> you know, Converse have won every single pistol round in this series, and they've won a total of, what, seven rounds in the first two maps, you know. Kind of six rounds are guaranteed if you win those pistols, but just struggling to find too much success after that one. Speaking of struggling to find success, Saints are down to 10-8 here. Looking a bit rough for them in this second half, but they do oh. have the save. d in Got such him. a great position. He's going to pick up LeCaro, and this was a save round for the side of the Saints, so the fact they're able to get themselves into this 2v2 with the spike down, with the weapons, is already a great sign for them. If they're able to win this round, surely we'll able to be able to bring themselves back into it. Let's see how they decide to play. They have a judge and a sheriff to work with. If they just find that wall bang onto that raise right there, could be wraps. It's also Sky on the other side of the map. Let's see how they decide to play this one. Smoke will go down. I have a feeling he might just stick this one. Let's see. No Half way. the defuse will go through, oh. but Ethan's gonna find a pick onto Spectre and Arcus will find them through the smoke. 11-8 lead for the side of the University of Akron. Saints have one final buy. This is kind of their last stand. If they don't win this one, it might be all wraps, but if they're able to win this one, they can string back a nice comeback. Absolutely, and of course, the University of Akron sitting nice and, and pretty. Even if something does go wrong in this round, they can absolutely come back full force the next time by, and it's just gonna be like St. Clair Academy, back up against the wall once again here. Just some solid rounds overall here again from uh, from University of Akron. With this time it was Cursed who seems to be the one stepping up for the University of Akron. Not just Arcus and uh, Deaton um, making the plays this time by. So it took a little bit of time there for Cursed, more of a support player in the last two games, but is really making it work this time by here in game number three right when his team or their team needed it. So as the rest of the yeah. Akron squad seems to be hovering around that B site, we should have ourselves an engagement momentarily. Yes, we will. 
the camera here is not not the best considering the smokes are there, but it's going to be a very, very quick push coming out from University of Akron. They're going to get onto the site very, very quickly. The spike won't be going down oh. just here. Detain will find one, but will get taken down for his troubles. Curse finds coming. Just Rago's going to find one as well as they're in a 4v2 situation. 4v1 now. It's going to be all up oh, to no. this raise as that was a great site take from the side of University of Akron. They're going to be getting the spike down. Good position from okay. D. He's gonna find a couple, won't find the flick. Onto the third, oh. will try to find Ruggle there as well, but just too many heads to tap there. And that is going to be a 12A lead for University Match of Akron. St. Clair College Let's cannot play. afford too much here. You could see if they're gonna buy the Vandals, they won't even be able to buy armor for most members. And it's they're kind of on their last legs. The game is still not over, but it's definitely not looking good for the Saints in that one. I mean, incredible double there from Dean to try and uh, clutch that one up, and then Commodus did get the cup check on the one player, but unfortunately could not finish the rest of the members down. As we now see over on the varsity side, we do have, of course, Valorant and Call of Duty up at the same time. It looks like Converse is going to get blown up there. Yeah. Saints were able to kill off enough clock, so sure, he took out all the members, but the Saints are still going to find that snowball rolling with round after round of victories like you said kind of deja vu from the from the first game take two games and then saints take the majority of the rest yeah that's how our saints love to play this one that's how they've played this one <clears throat> for a while and it's worked for them so far but we need something to work for our Saints Academy team here as the carry gets taken down very, very early. It's going to be a full on B push for University of Akron. Spectre is going to go down, and that might be I all she exactly wrote. This plant should be going down any second here. The last hope here is the ultimate from Dean, but as I say that, Deaton finds that one, and that is going to probably be the nail in the coffin. Spike is down. Saints are just getting sprayed through smokes. Now in a 1v5 scenario on the fade here going to be almost impossible for Storm to even think about clutching this one on. All he has oh, is a... Oh, they're going to walk by each other. Okay, that's a good way. Let the whole team walk by and then defuse the spike. Storm is still alive. We'll be able to find one winner. Okay. We'll be able to find a second. Does have oh. not have any idea that Cursed is there. A nice little try there from Storm, but that will be the game. University of Akron able to pull off the comeback after losing the first map 14-12 in pretty strong fashion, winning the next two and taking that series 2-1. I mean, fantastic effort and fantastic plays there from Akron to secure the W. Congratulations to them. A very, very well-fought battle between those two teams. I'm sure we'll see them again sometime later on in this season. But now, hopping right on back over to the Varsity Call of Duty side of things, where, yes, we have even more Akron. This time, we're on Game 3. In theory, this is 2-0 right now. Saints looking to close out the match nice and quick if they can secure this control round. They've secured Doesn't the one like point, but can they get this set? Second one here. It does look like Akron, for at least the time being, has been able to keep lives even and hold things off. Seven seconds left to go. She loves is going to be able to take care of that one. And now, with three seconds left, Priestley Ooh. just maybe, maybe oh, going to no, make something dead. happen. Never mind. She loves Aiden That's is it. going to take care of that one. So it's going to be a point a piece, I do believe here. No, oh, no, that's that was the first the first round. So yeah. Akron going to lead the charge here on a solid defense. Great start there from Akron. Obviously, we didn't get to see too much of the round, but they were able to hold the Saints on the defense on the second side there. And that's what this game was all about. Just holding down that second side is really the crucial key mm -hmm. as the first one usually is in the middle of the map second site is deep into a spawn you can see a site right next to the spawn there of the side of akron or yeah, saints. That's tough to hold. saints now on the defense yeah it's going to be a bit hard especially when you're spawning so far away from those sites but let's see all eight members going to be going towards that a site it's a great read from the side of the saints can they win their gunfights here now brandon will be falling down to thieves very very early it's a great start for the side of akron as thieves will go down just in the open there nice shots there from shilov's aiden though will take down instaya and kb is able to find the trade bio is going to pick up priestly however and the time on a is starting to tick saints have to contest this one desperately as brandon will have to find this one-on-one -on -one. sees what enemy is able to stay alive for a second but by I was able to find that pick, and that could be the B side confirmed for the side of Akron. Coming out swinging here in this round, but Priestley is going to find one. Won't be able to find the second as both sides are being captured now by the side of Akron. Great start for them to this attacking round. KB will be taken oh out no. by Brandon's grenade, actually, as the 
A side is still being captured. And Slay is gonna get in here after two ticks. We'll go down the trade. We'll come through so Saints have successfully defend the A side. But now onto the B side. So much action going on as it's gonna be looking like a cap coming through from Arkin. Absolutely. Action all over the place. This is why we love COD when it actually lets us get into the lobby in the first place. But <laughs> KB now with the double gonna be secure in that one. Hanging on by a thread here. Saints do not have the lives lead in this moment. So if this game does go to team deathmatch style, it is going to be Akron taking care of that advantage with some of these grenades. Brandon may have got a, the TK a little bit earlier, but he's starting to find its mark on some of the opponents here for the sign of Akron. So just tough spot to be in for St. Clair is just you know, a little bit tough here for Akron rather as well. Saints do have a little bit of a defensive position yeah. set up around that B side and Slaya is going to be able to find the first initial one and Akron, ticks. they're like funneled here and Slaya is going to find another one, KB and then one more time, oh, sure. Nice. And Slaya is going to give up his own life to make sure that Priestley can secure the other one and one after another the Akron players are falling to the wayside as the Saints in this long range engagement, they've got the lives lead, they've got the position Oh and they are my. just shredding through this Akron squad. That was great shots there from Brandon. Is going to be on the five killing spree now to close out the round. And you, that was a bit of a rough start to the round for the Saints. But they're able to bring that one back. Able to make it 1-1 one, one without giving up a single point. Very, very intense there. In the top right corner, however, not the most intense. A2 came here. Saints just... Running away with it. Sev's gonna find one. Nemesis will find the trade. Instinct will have to be there. But Smiley will find a couple there. One with a headshot. One with, I think that was his Molotov. And it's a 2v1 here on this B side. Could even be a 3v1. But this is a great flank from Eggroll. The oh, smoke, smoke is picture perfect though. Detective Carter on 18 HP will have to be careful. As Eggroll finds one. Caillou finds one back. 2v2 scenario? No, 2v1 scenario. The plant will easily go down. The Saints look to win their ninth in a row. I mean, where's that spike, though? Oh, no, the, it's, it's actually in the hand of St. Clair. So they're going to be able to plant this thing down on that B site. We're just going to just leave it all up to Agrol to try and find their way through. Has been exposed immediately, and Caillou is not going to waste any time with it. Just going to shut it down with a nice quick little two-tap headshot and call it a day here with nine rounds in the book. Saints, like you said before, like we said before, deja vu from the, the first game. Two rounds go towards the side of Converse, and everything else is just money right now for St. Clair College Varsity Valorants. But now, hopping back on over to the Call of Duty side of things, round three of control. This time, Saints on the attacking side. This is where they got um, kind of shut down the first time. Yep. And right now, it's kind of seeming like a little bit more the same, a little bit more even, though, compared to the first time by. It's just kind of one-for-one -one trades across the map. And it's going to be that B site captured almost instantly for St. Clair. That's true, yeah. I don't think that's the biggest difference here. You can see Akron defending that A site basically with all they got. And now that's going to be a cr few crucial picks there to maybe get some momentum. KB on the four spree only has 12 kills. Usually he's up there top fragging above the whole lobby. So you're definitely going to see him heat up a little bit as the longer this map goes. But Akron are just playing well so far. Able to find those picks. Priestley is going to be able to pick up one here. as They have to play a little bit passive. Who is in the spawn? MZ is in the spawn of St. Clair. Fighting KB there. That's a very important challenge. MZ is going to be able to stay alive for the time being. But him being alive in that spot just stops the pushes through. Priestley is going to be able to find one. And Saints are on this A side. Priestley and KB finding a couple. They're able to take out MZ there so now the Saints will go on to this A side with all of their members and they're going to be able to get a tick early. Brandon picking up a kip. Peeves going to pick one back onto Priestley. Going to look for Brandon there through the wall. Won't be able to find it. The push will come through. He will be able to find Brandon as the second tick comes through. They have to get onto the side. Enslay able to find one. We'll have to go around the corner. KB keeping this one up from the other side. Taking the shots but they will be able to get the capture with one HP left and St. Clair Saints put themselves on map point and what we believe is match point against Akron University and they're going to be on this defense, on the stronger side, in my opinion, as Absolutely. they're going to look to find the, the map, uh, the match winning defense right here. Just everything is working right now here for St. Clair Varsity. And one thing I'm definitely happy to see is, of course, um, KB, our recent graduate from Academy, being promoted up into Varsity, fitting in flawlessly here with this roster and just shredding and finding these like solid KDs 
for because excuse me because a lot of times when i see an academy player get promoted i feel like they kind of like lack of confidence joining the new roster, but Absolutely. that has not been the case at all here with oh KB goodness, as we hop on green. in. And like you said, it is all green and Slaya is finding a bunch of eliminations to start off this round and swing momentum directly into the Saints' favor before Akron really even have an opportunity to breathe. Yeah, five kills to zero to start off this round for the Saints. That's six. And Slay able to pick up one. Does get taken out, but KB finds the trade. That's a great start for them. But Priestley is going to get blown up by the car. Unfortunate for him there. Still a great start to this defense for the Saints. As Akron are just kind of split pushing, not putting all their eggs in one basket. And I think in this game mode, that is the best plan. And Slay is going to find one as Brandon gets taken out. KB taking a lot of shots, but will be able to make it out alive with his life. Ninsa is going to go down. KB is going to go down as well. And this should be control of the B side as three picks okay. come through for Akron. They should be able to secure this one. Saints are going to get one last crack at this defense. Need to find some picks early, though, to bring this one back. Let's see if Brandon can do anything alongside KB. They're all moving up here. That's two ticks. They have to move quickly if they want to get a contest on here. Priestley is going to find one, but that's all the way across the map. And now the Saints make their move. She loves Aiden. Picks up two, but one is his teammate. And that's going to be the wipe for the side of the Saints. KB finding some extra shots there wow. towards the end. And the defense will be coming through. Saints are 30 seconds away from taking this one. KB in their spawn, able to find one, able to oh. get some help from his teammates there as that's three more going down for the side of Akron and now they are down to their last push. KB in this head glitch just able to fry them down now on the kill streak. 19 kills for him in this map. Great performance from the whole team. Look at the kills as Enslaya picks up one more. 10 seconds left. Akron are going to make one final dash but they're just running like a deer in the headlights. She loves Aiden. Picks up two, one of them being his teammate yet again. Enslaya is going to find two more for in the there end there, is. one more there, and that's going to be the victory going over to St. Clair College of Varsity. A very, very nice series from them, able to take 3-1 in the control, and we, what we believe is a 3-0 overall. It does look like it does end up being a 3-0 in this scenario, so fantastic job there for the Call of Duty Varsity team to continue a dominant season with two three. O's. But now, back on over to the varsity side of things. Converse was able to get a little bit of a combo breaker, taking down the last two rounds we've here. Ten to four now. <laughs> yeah, we've seen this like completely Every single time. rinse and repeat, it seems. Just, I guess St. Clair is on the script or something. They, they know what's up. This is the point in the match where you toss a couple of rounds just to give a little bit of copium to the opponents, I suppose, just to get a little bit of hope. Yeah. And then, uh, wait, it's usually around, like, what, 10-5 that this all of a sudden turns into just another snowball. Yeah. But again, I'd like to be wrong. Let's see what Converse has up in store here. Both teams buys this round. Very, very interesting as it's going to be... That's one way to put it. <laughs> Converse opting to go for that full by last second, and they're going to full-on rush onto this A side. I love this play. The ultimate will come out there from the... There, let's see if Instinct can oh. find one with the Pucky, and he does. Can he find that weapon for himself? Would be crucial as Saints look to find the retake in the 5v4. They do not have the weapon advantage, but they do have the number advantage. But as I say, that Caillou does go down. Giza going to be on the flank here with the Stinger. Going to not be able to find any. Instinct finds his second of the round with that Bucky doing so much work. Has the Bulldog now. The Peaks will come out from Seth here. And that's a great, great smoke. Crafts will pick up Instinct though, so they should know exactly where he is. There's going to be the tap coming out. As Seth picks up Detective Carter down in mid. And now the Diffuse will come through. Egro looking for the... Uh, Spray through, through the smoke, they're on one HP. Brimstone body block for your teammate. Oh, he Do tried. It. One more shot should be able to take him down. Egg roll on one HP, shoot through the smoke. One more bullet will do it. Oh, the Brimstone's not peeking. Great play for him. Smiley is gonna find the kill, but I don't think he'll have enough time for the defuse and he won't. A great round defensively Ooh. there from Converse University as they're able to clutch up with the spike defusing there. Smiley definitely tried to block a couple bullets there, but just could not do it. And they dropped the fifth round. That one probably should have went the way of the Saints, but in the clutch, Converse were able to find it. I mean, good on Agro not to get overzealous in that position, using the smoke in the, those, uh, in the showers to try and just be as evasive as possible, make it extremely uncomfortable for the Saints to actually commit to that defuse. And now, um, this is the point in the, the paperwork that says this is where Saints just take the rest of it from here, but... Again, I would absolutely love to be wrong. Converse moving towards the showers, but it's actually going to be Caillou and Instinct who immediately find themselves too is going to get traded, or one of them is going to get traded out. So not the end-all, be-all, but still a solid start here for the Saints as it's 
looking like a push towards the safe site. Oh. Sep is there, but it's going to be immediately traded out there. Crass with the Sheriff is going to take care of that one nice and quick. The two on three with about a minute left to go. Where is the spike? It's it is down. just completely down, and it is covered by Saints yeah. players right now. This is going to be a very, very tough spot if it was even, let alone a two on three here for Converse. They are going to spot them out. They know what's going on, and they just realize how dire, I think, of a situation this is. It's a very, very dire situation. Detective Carr doesn't really have a weapon for himself as well, only rocking that Sheriff St. Clair. All they have to do is just kind of sit back, relax, and not get impatient here. The Flash will come out here, but Instinct will find Detective Carter and Crass there for the round win. St. Clair College, 11-5 now, two rounds away from taking a swift 2-0 here. And we know our Saints don't like to play around with their food. They're gonna look to finish this one off very, very soon. They're able to get the full buys through. Converse also buying everything they can, I think. Uh, if, if this round gets taken by St. Clair, it's going to be one of, one, another one of those scenarios where the last round won't really be too exciting considering the situation. But if Converse mm -hmm. can pick this one up, can maybe find some room for a comeback. Well, the rough part is here for Converse, even if they do get this round, if they lose like three or four oh, people, it's going to be one. brutal. And Instinct is going to fire immediately, bring out the rocket launcher and take care Oh, of Detective rest. Carter. And Detective Carter is in a very, very odd spot. <laughs> going to have to be very careful there, but I think they're onto him. I think they might be. But that he's going to be able to hey, find I'll... Caillou. They're putting so much into Let killing Detective Carter, but he's finding two all his lonesome, and the plant will come through from the side of Converse. Let's see if Smiley can find anything. No, he can't. And, you know, we were laughing at him. Detective Carter cooked up something devious that round, finding two, and this should be very hard for Sarah Sinclair to win. Eggroll has his Brimstone ultimate just in case the defuse ever gets started. But I think Converse have done, done very, very well for themselves to bring this one back. Seth will get taken down by Nemesis immediately and Giza in a less than good spot here. We'll go down to Nemesis. Great round from Converse off the back of Detective Carter as St. Clair College can't find it there. Converse maybe starting a bit of a comeback. Okay, so one, I can happily throw away my script because it is apparently wrong. <laughs> Two, who in the world flanks like that with a cipher? Yeah. Like, huh? And two, or excuse me, three. Three, <laughs> three rather. How does he pull off a double in that position? It looked like the Saints were onto him pretty well immediately, but yet Detective Carter still pulling out the double and just drew so much attention away from the Saints that by the time things, the dust like settled, it was already a two on four. And Converse played that to perfection. They played around their Brimstone Ultimate as we now head into this next round here. Oh, Instinct. Instinct is not going to find the initial Bucky shot. Oh, he's going to get the second time around. And now oh, the my. Saints are tearing through. This is going to be round 12 more than likely going into their favor. It is all up to egg roll. And I mean, you better... I don't care if you have one nuke, you need like five nukes to take care of that much space and a flawless there for Saints to shut down any sort of momentum. Yeah, Converse tried to just run into the site, but Saints mowed them down and put themselves on match point. They have a couple ultimates to work with. Those knives and that Brimstone ultimate will be coming out on the other side. We got Converse with that Sky ultimate and that those knives as well so i think both jets are expected to use their ultimates here nemesis won't even buy a weapon he's just assuming that his knives are going to be the only form of fighting he's going to be doing in this round and let's see how converse decides to approach this one smiley instantly going to use his brimstone ultimate on caillou a very interesting strategy there using it as a smoke maybe but caillou now in the back lines going to die We've seen that one before his blitz finds a couple now Saints going a bit too aggressive here, definitely playing with their food to say the least, but going for those highlight plays as Nemesis now going to pull out his knives on that A side, going to look to make some space. Giza is somehow caught in the spawn here, able to find one, able to find a second. Great shots from Giza, and it's going to be able to make it out alive. Now will go, I know he's going to go for that peak. Let's see if Detective Carter will take it. He's playing a bit more passive, even knowing that that Sky's at 30 HP. That's a very interesting play there, as Giza is single-handedly just mowing down all of Converse. There's, they're not pushing him using their numbers, which is very, very interesting. And he's buying a lot of time for the Saints. If he can get one more pick here, it would be insane. He's going to go around this corner as Nemesis finds one. Blitz is going to pick up Giza there. 12-7 as Converse maybe starting a bit of a comeback. But every time they have, St. Clair have shut it down early. They only need one more round, and I think this round is going to be the one where they bring it home. 
I mean, I feel like a play like that is something that I would uh, theory craft in one of my uh, solo queue games. Was like, hey, if I actually just use my nuke as a smoke, do you think it'd throw him off hard enough? And no, no. the answer is no. He is immediately <laughs> shut down, and you are without some solid utility for that round, to say the least. So Converse is going to bring this up to seven now. Saints still on match point. Of course, they already have game one in the in the bag for themselves, looking for oh the finisher. My. And Instinct is just going to fly on through. Takes care of egg roll. That is going to be the refrag, though. Ooh. Nemesis is going to make sure that this turns into a four on three in their favor. And the rest of them pushing oh. towards that B site. Giza's finding one. And it's just back and forth. And nice now shot. it is all up to one. one more Saint to try and hang on to this one. It's just going to be up to Smiley as everybody else is pursuing the B site. And all three members are long. Smiley obviously has no idea that's the case now. H might have an idea where the players are. Oh, missing some crucial shots there, but is able to pick it up. The TPs will come through from both members. I think Converse were better off just sending all three members onto that B side and just taking the 3v1, but they're going to get the spike down. They're going to opt to lose one of their members there. And let's see how Smiley decides to play the recontest. He's going to throw that Molly out into that corner, but nobody is there. He's going to know that immediately. Both players are going to split up a great strategy here from Converse. One playing showers, one playing main. And it's all up to Smiley. He has to go a little bit quickly. Has one smoke. Could throw that one down. The Sky Dog will be there. And Smiley knows that there's a Sky somewhere here. Oh, shoots through the wall. There's not even find him. He's going to throw down that smoke onto Spike. I think he might just stick this one. Let's see. Pros don't fake and won't be able to fake as he gets shot down. But on one HP now, will not find the shot there. On to Blitz. Will go down. Converse, slowly but surely. Kind of creeping up on the Saints here as they're only four rounds uh, uh, behind them. Yeah, that was a rough spot. The two on one, it looked like he kind of managed. Then you got the little polywag running on through, just <laughs> yeah. making things a little bit more difficult. And there's no way you're getting out of that one. Of course, now Saints still on match point, but a lot of this uh, this trickery or some of this uh, some of the plays have kind of backfired up against them and it's going to put them into the spot where they're going to be buying extremely light. Yep. Just looking for those close quarters engagements, pistols and shotguns and see what kind of damage you can do to maybe push for another round or make a cheeky win here. Yeah, Saints definitely going to look to win this one, but not in the best scenario to do so. Kai, you're going to look for an early shot there. Won't be able to find it as it's going to be Converse playing this one very, very slow. I think they've realized that the Saints like to play a bit aggressive, maybe too aggressive, but now finally the Saints have calmed down. They're, the Red Bull may be kicked, uh, kicked out of commission now, and they're sitting <laughs> back on the site, letting Converse push into them. Let's see how this one goes for them. Giza playing, though, very, very aggressively with the Guardian, not somewhere you would usually play with the Guardian. Let's yeah, see how he decides to play this one. I think he's going to pop the Flash here and back up into the Viper ult. And Saints want to win this round badly. They're using their ultimates, considering they're down in the artillery. Let's see if Caillou can maybe find an early oh, pick here with the Sheriff. Able to see them oh. through the smoke. They're going to find some shots onto the Brimstone. Do a lot of damage, but won't find the kill. Still a 5v5. And it looks like Converse is just pushing into the Viper ultimate. I don't know if that's the oh. best idea. And as three picks come through, fourth pick comes wow. out from seven. And that's going to be the round for the Saints. Converse really just pushing through that Viper ult. Yes, St. Clair on a bit of a save by. Able to take the map and the match 2-0. Oh, and I think that is going to be it for all of our games. So let's look at the scoreboard real quick of this game to see what went down. Blitz on the side of Converse, having an amazing game mm -hmm. for himself. 25 and 13, great performance. But other than that, it's all red, and red is St. Clair. They were able to take that one in not as dominant fashion as game one, kind of threw a few rounds away, but kind of felt in control that entire game. I mean, I can't get over that last round, though, because given that they had the Viper ultimate, their buy made sense. Yeah. Like, getting strictly, strictly pistols and strictly shotguns to uh, make that play, but so much of that relied on calling out where the uh, uh, where Converse was going to push and calling it correctly and that they didn't uh, just top in a teleporter and go to the next side. And I'm very surprised they just kind of dove through the, uh, the Viper pit, but Saints called that basically perfectly and shut it down just like that. May have been undergunned in a long range fight, but when it's just everybody condensed within one Viper pit, then that was an absolutely Fantastic mind game and fantastic play. Yeah, great job from our Saints. And, you know, let's talk about the whole day. We had a long day today. Mm, long but good one. Long but good one. We had Academy uh, 
Call of Duty taking on Akron University, and that one went. Yeah, that was a three-one to Akron. Akron. Yeah, bit of a rough one there. You know, Saints just couldn't pull off the victory today, and then we had our Saints. Uh, Val Valorant taking on Akron as well. Couldn't pull off the victory there. A very, very exciting first map going to mm -hmm. overtime, but just could not find the finish. Akron getting the better of us on the academy side, but take us into how our varsity teams... I was going to say, like, as a whole today, Akron gets the 2-1 yep. on us. They were able to get the, the academy... Uh, Valorant team and the Academy Call of Duty team taken down. But, like I said, as soon as it went over to the varsity side of things, that's where our Saints just shined. As, of course, the Call of Duty game 3-0 into our favor up against the University of Akron. And then the Converse game here in the Star League Valorant 2-0 with a little bit of a cheekiness to say the least. But a very, very decisive victory nonetheless. So big congratulations to both of the, or to all of our winners here today. Not just, of course, for the Saints. Akron put on some fantastic showings as well. And so, and so did Converse when the time came. Yeah. But you can definitely tell that uh, when it came to varsity, we were kind of favored in that one. We were, we were, and it was a great day of games, but it is time to wrap it up. We got to say our thank yous. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We have Subway, HyperX, Tim Hortons, the SRC, and the St. Clair alumni. Thank you to everyone who came out to help today. There were a lot of games, so you know you know everyone that was here today. Quick shout-outs to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a ton of people and a lot of equipment being gone, gone through. Thank you for holding down the fort. <laughs> Y'all didn't see this, but I was alongside the rest of the production. We were running around back and forth, making sure all these computers were working, especially for Call of Duty. Come on, God. But uh, big props, of course, to everybody in the back room. I believe we have Patrick, Daniil, TJ. Jordan was was here. Tommy was here. And I hope I am not forgetting anybody. Phil. If, if, Phil oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> for the Academy thing as well, as a part of the eSports Administration program, um... Phil and the rest of the esports students decided to take on streaming everything Academy Call of Duty for the season. And I'd say for the first time, they've done a solid job. Looking yep. forward to seeing more from them in the future. But speaking about the future, I do want to very, very quickly as well go over what we have on board tomorrow. Because this isn't the only day with four matches happening at once. So we have, of course... Tomorrow, it's Academy Game Day. Everything is going to be Academy. Going to start things off at 7 o'clock. We have Rainbow Six Siege. Going to be taking the stage. Um, and then right after that, at 8 o'clock, we have three more matches starting all at the same time in the ECAC. We have Fortnite Duos. We have Team Fight Tactics, as well as Omega Strikers. So plenty of action to be had here on the Saints Gaming CA stream this week. And then that's not even touching Friday. That's going to be another like four match day. So as you can see, the chaos has started. Collegiate regular season is underway. A very, very fun time of the year. Yeah, and to not miss anything, any updates, follow us on all of our social medias. We upload there daily to keep up with all of our Saints stuff. Now that the seasons have started, we're throwing the, the updates, the post there every single day at least four or five posts on the saints uh, saints twitter so very mm. very exciting times you can see we have twitch youtube facebook twitter or x instagram and tiktok follow us everywhere to not miss a single thing saints related and absolutely to follow up with what you're saying like val and the rest of the marketing squad are going absolutely nuts to make sure that you are informed and entertained outside of the broadcast so Honestly, big shout outs to them and shout outs to everybody for tuning in. And whether you're here for the Saints, Akron, Converse, or just tuning in to watch your friends and family, thank you for tuning in. Yep. I mean, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Yeah, it was me, Theo, and Dan. Thank you very much for having me today. And thank you guys for watching. We'll be seeing you tomorrow at 7 p.m. for some Call of Duty action. Don't miss it.